25 Zav section 1 This is the Torah of the burnt offering. Rabbi Shimon talks about the burnt offering saying that it is the Torah. He shows how Malchut is attached to the middle column and that this happens through the secret of man with the desire of the priests, the prayers of Israel, and the singing of the Levites. He says that the burnt offering is the Holy of Holies since it ties three spirits together, the lower spirit called the Holy Spirit, the middle spirit, and the secretly concealed upper spirit, the spirit of defilement, then has no power and it is removed from the side of holiness. Rabbi Shimon talks about the sacrifice of cattle and the sacrifice of birds. He concludes by saying that and let birds fly above the earth is the secret of the chariot as the birds are the angels Michael and Gabriel. 1 This is the Torah of the burnt offering. Bayai 62 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying your righteousness is like the great mountains, your judgments. Our great deep tale in 367 we have explained and learned this verse come and behold the burnt offering lit rising causes the congregation of Israel to rise and be attached above and cleaves to the world to come by so that everything will be one connected together in joy since it rises higher and higher up to Bina it is written this is the Torah which is the secret of male and female together namely Zeir and Ben and Malchut which are the written Torah and the oral Torah rising with love to Bina this Hebzotis the secret of Malchut the oral Torah and the Torah is the secret of Zeir and Ben the written Torah too we explained in relation to the verse his left hand is under my head Sher Hashirim 26 that Malchut receives from the left column of Zeir and Ben when the north side stirs which is Gur of Zeir and Ben the left column Malchut then rises with love to be adorned with the right of Zeir and Ben which is Jesus she Malchut is attached to the middle namely the central Column of Zeir Anpin, which is Typhoret of Zeir Anpin, and everything shines from within the secret of the Holy of Holies. Bina. This happens through the secret of man by the wish of the priests who are the right column, the prayers of the children of Israel who are the central column, and the singing of the Levites who are the left column. Three, we have explained that the burnt offering is the Holy of Holies according to the secret of the supernal spirit. Bina. For three spirits are connected to the burnt offering. One, the lower spirit called the Holy Spirit, Malchut. Two, the middle spirit called the Spirit of Chakma and Bina, which is Zeir Anpin, the son of Chakma and Bina. It is also called the low spirit, being lower in relation to Bina. Yet the spirit comes out of the shofar that includes fire and water. And three, the secretly concealed upper spirit, Bina, in which all the holy spirits are sustained, from which all faces shine. The burnt offering therefore becomes a real spirit again for them. With the secret of the cattle offered, the external forces feed and content themselves so that another spirit will be joined to holiness, a spirit within the one of defilement through the tallow and fat sacrificed. As we learn, the burnt offering is therefore the holy of holies, and the purpose of all other sacrifices is to produce peace throughout the whole world from different factions and from the antagonists in the world, to remove them and to radiate from within a desire to be sent today. Are called sacrifices lit holies of a minor grade, since they are not adorned high above in the holy of holies, namely by the there are therefore sacrifices of a minor grade and may be slaughtered everywhere, as explained. The burnt offering, which is the secret of the holy of holies, is not like the other sacrifices because all that is connected to it is holy. Five come and behold, and the priest shall put on his linen head bad garment. Vay cross 63. This is a garment especially designed for holiness. The Hebrew word bad is as bad ad lit apart meaning set apart for holiness it is also written these are holy garments therefore shall he bathe his flesh in water and so put them on vayikra 164 why is it holy the secret thereof is that the burnt offering is the holy of holies since everything rises to be adorned by the holy of holies namely by in one bond the spirit of defilement that defiles everything then turns and passes away and has no power nor does it come near the temple it is removed from all the aspects of holiness and everything remains holy in holiness alone six rabbi shimon said we learned that it is written hashem you preserve man and beast tehillim 367 thus the secret of man rises from the aspect of man through desire and prayer and the beast from that aspect of the cattle which is sacrificed on the altar it is therefore written if any man of you bring an offering vayikra 12 a man sacrifices indeed in desire and prayer to tie a knot above in it Secret of man then comes that of the cattle everything is in the verse man and beast this is the secret reason why both man and cattle are needed for a sacrifice as it says come and behold when the holy one blessed be he created the world he did it thus man and beast section 2 turtle doves and young pigeons rabbi shimon continues from the previous essay by saying that the two birds are sacrifices that are made in order to raise malchut to zir and rabbi laser asks where the desire of the devout priests levites and children of israel rises to seven you may say that yet it is written and let birds fly above the earth there she 120 from which sacrifices are offered and even burnt offerings as written and if the burnt sacrifice for his sacrifice to hashem be of birds vayikra 114 thus cattle is not accurate as you explained he answers come and behold of all the birds only turtle doves and young pigeons are offered there is a secret to it which is that what is fit in the one is unfit in the other. The color red is suitable for turtle doves, but not for young pigeons. The reason is that the young pigeon is the right, and the turtle dove is the left. Hence, red is suitable for it, which alludes to the left column, and all is one eight. And let birds fly above the earth. There she one hundred and twenty. We explain this to be the secret of the chariot, as they are the angels Michael and Gabriel, who are called birds, the spirit of holiness, which is Malchut arises through them to mate with Zeir and Ben. They are two, one on the right, the other on the left. Bird is on the right, which is Michael, and fly is to the left, which is Gabriel. Thus, there is one to the right and one to the left. Nine. This is why these two are sacrificed: turtle doves and young pigeons. The secret of Michael and Gabriel, in order to raise the Holy Spirit, Malchut to Zeir and Ben. The left of Zeir and Ben adorns and arms below the left side of Malchut, and the right does so to the right, so that. A woman joins her husband, namely Malchut, joins Zeir and Pin to become one. Everything ascends to be attached together above and below the Holy One. Blessed be he rises and he alone is exalted. Ten in ancient books, it is said that the poor who sacrifice turtle doves and young pigeons give no portion to sustain the worlds, but rather to bring unity above. Yet everything above and below is properly attached to its own side, as we already explained. Section 3 Whither does it? Cleaving of the wish rise up to Rabbi Shimon answers by saying that their devotion rises to the endless world. He speaks about the great mystery of the endless world where there are no desires, no lights, and no candles, and tells us that all the lights and candles in Atzala depend on the endless world for their existence but are not perceivable. No knowledge pertains to the endless world when Chakma and Bina rise by their illumination, only the odor is known, not the savor. Rabbi Shimon says that. Zav is idolatry and that Yisrael have Zav the other side at their disposal to separate it from holiness by means of the burnt sacrifice the goal of the desire and prayer and sacrifice is to separate the spirit of defilement from holiness 11 Rabbi Lazar asked his father Rabbi Shimon everything is bound in the holy of holies by so as to illuminate yet whither does the cleaving of the wish of the priests to love it and Yisrael rise 12 he said to him we have explained that their devotion rises to the endless world since any bond union or perfection secretly conceals that which is not to be comprehended or known in which the desire of all desires lies the endless world cannot be known nor has it an end or beginning it is not like I and which is Keter called I am the first to produce a head beginning and an end have what is the head it is a supernal point the head to all that is concealed existing within thought this is Chakma called Beginning Chakma emanates from Keter called I in accordance with the secret of the verse but where lit from and shall wisdom be found I Y O B 2812 it produced an end Malchut called the end of the matter Kahilat 1213 however in the endless world there is no end 13 there are no witches no lights and no candles in the endless world all these lights and candles in Atzala depend upon the endless world for their existence but are not perceivable that which is known yet unknown namely that it is possible to speak of from the point of view of knowledge is nothing but the most concealed supernal wish called and lit not which is Keter but no knowledge pertains to the endless world 14 when the supernal point Chakma and the world to come by arise by their illumination only the smell is known like smelling an odor and being perfumed by it this is not considered pleasure Hednaka called Saber Lit Nishawash is
to be interpreted as the other side he answers here to it means that the other side is at their disposal for as long as the children of Israel perform the desire of their master the other side cannot have power over them 16 this verse command Aaron and his sons comes to show the secret meaning of this to adorn that holy spirit high above and to separate the spirit of defilement and bring it very low the one namely the children of Israel by wish and prayer and the other namely the priest by the act of sacrifice each as befits him 17 this verse is the indication as written command Aaron and his sons saying command is idolatry the spirit of defilement saying is a woman called fear of Hashem namely Malchut as it is written here saying and elsewhere it was said let's saying if a man put away his wife here may 31 as in the verse saying alludes to a woman so here saying alludes to a woman we have already asserted that hence everything is said in this Verse namely the adorning of Malchut and the lowering of the other side and the role of the priest is to rectify everything according to the secret of man and beast. 18 happy is the portion of the righteous in this world and in the world to come for they know the ways of the Torah and tread it in the path of truth about them. It is written Hashem on them men live. Yeshua 3816 what are them they are the ways of the Torah and men live means they endure in this world and in the world too. Come section 4 this is the Torah of the burnt offering part 2 Rabbi Shia says that this is the Torah is the congregation of Israel and that the burnt offering means it rises to be adorned on high. Another explanation is that the burnt offering is an evil thought that arises in a man's mind and that that evil thought should be burnt by fire. Rabbi Shia tells how the other side is subdued by the river of fire we learn from Rabbi Shimon that the fire of it. Altar should never be allowed to go out so that its power and strength will not weaken and lastly he tells us of the five kinds of fire that descend on the offering 19 come and behold it is written this is the Torah of the burnt offering Vayai cross 62 Rabbi Shia said I have interpreted this verse in the following manner this is the Torah is the congregation of Israel namely Malchut it is the burnt offering lit rising since it rises to be adorned high up properly attached even to the place called the Holy of Holies by the 20 another explanation this is the Torah is the congregation of Israel Malchut and the burnt offering is an evil thought that arises in man's mind to make him deviate from the way of truth it is the burnt offering which rises and accuses man it should be burnt by fire so as not to give it room for accusations 21 hence it shall be burning upon the altar all night of it what is night it is the congregation of Israel Malchut which is sought. Let this that purifies man from that which it is upon the altar referring to the river of fire as a place for burning all those which do not endure namely the other side since they are passed through that burning fire and their power is removed from the world therefore in order for it to have no power it should be upon the altar all night it is then subdued and has no power 22 when that other side is subdued the congregation of Israel Malchut rises which is the Holy Spirit rising to be adorned above she rises when that other power is subdued and separated from her hence the secret of the sacrifice is needed to separate that side the other side from the Holy Spirit Malchut and to give it a share so that the Holy Spirit will rise up 23 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying and the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning in it Vayai cross 65 he asks and the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning in it for what reason and the priest shall burn wood on it every Morning of it for what reason why should a priest burn wood upon the fire we learned that fire is always judgment and the priest comes from the right side and is far from judgment for the priest does not come into the world through judgment yet here it indicates that he should burn judgment in the world meaning he should burn wood as written and the priest shall burn wood on it 24 he answers we learned that when a man is about to sin before his master he burns himself with the flame of the evil inclination which in turn comes from the spirit of defilement hence the spirit of defilement dwells in him sometimes the sacrifice is known to come from that side namely the goat for he should offer on the altar that which is like him like the sinner that spirit of defilement is not consumed or needed neither from the sinning man nor from that side from which he comes saved by the fire on the altar since this fire destroys the spirit of defilement and evil species the priest concentrates on this when he kindles fire that consumes evil species from the world there is therefore the need for a priest to do it as a priest is from the right and the right consumes the left 25 it must therefore never be extinguished but the fire shall ever be burning of it six so that its power and strength will not weaken with which it can break the evil's mighty hold from the world it must therefore never go out the priest should arrange a fire upon it early in the morning when his side rains for the right side rains in the morning and awakens in the world to perfume it by arranging fire upon the altar the judgments will be subdued and will never awaken in the world in relation to this we learned that there is a fire consuming fire since the upper fire of Malchut consumes another fire and the fire on the altar consumes another fire of the other side therefore this fire must never go out and so the priest arranges it daily rai may the faithful shepherd 26 it is a commandment to sacrifice the burnt offering properly of this it says this is the Torah of the burnt offering Vayai cross 62 there are five kinds of fire that used to descend upon the offering one a consuming fire which does not drink two a fire that drinks but does not consume three a consuming and drinking fire four a fire which consumes both moist and dry things five a fire which does not consume nor drink corresponding to these are the verses one this is the Torah of the burnt offering two it is the burnt offering which shall be burning a bit three upon the altar a bit four all night a bit five and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning in it a bit section five burnt offering sin offering and guilt offering Rabbi Shimon likens the plain interpretations of the Torah to dry wood and the mysteries of the Torah to fresh wood he talks about the sacrifices brought for the positive and negative precepts we learn about the ways of the halacha where one must look carefully. For any explanations or pieces that seem to be missing in the mission and we find that Moses and Elijah are those who help to teach those who study the Torah and help to explain its mysteries Rabbi Shimon says that the side of the burning bush was mentioned five times and the side is revealed on the 248 positive precepts that are the five books of the Torah he talks about the concealed wisdom of the Torah and says that only Moses saw directly into the shining mirror the secret of Chesedim of Zer and the faithful shepherd Moses tells us about the burnt offering the sin offering the guilt offering and the peace offering we hear that Elijah will come and separate Malchut from the clipot which will happen at the end of the correction guilt and sin are like adhesions that restrict Malchut from flying up to Zer and blowing by the Holy Spirit 27 the sages of the mission explain that the burnt offering holy rises high up this is by the first hay of Yud hey, Bob, hey. And called thus after her hay equals five visions, namely the above mentioned five fires drawn to male and female from Bainiyah is an only daughter, namely the pupil, the daughter of the Imalchut of which it says, and the side of the glory of Hashem was like a devouring fire. Shema 2417 Bob, which is Typhor at the central column, that is a fire that eats and drinks, is the light of the daughter of the I when Malchut receives from the Bob. She too is a fire that drinks all the water of the Torah and devours all the sacrifices in the prayer. She eats both what is moist and dry. He explains she draws the literal interpretations of the Torah which are like dry wood and draws the mysteries of the Torah which are like fresh wood. This is a fire that consumes both what is moist and dry. 28. We should further explain that the moist things which she devours are all the sacrifices presented in prayer as in so we will offer the words of our lips instead of caps. Hashia 143 for positive precepts. She eats dry things namely all the sacrifices presented in prayer for the negative precepts punishable by four kinds of death stoning burning beheading and strangulation these are the sacrifices brought for the positive and negative precepts of the Shechina that is called prayer they are offered for the positive and negative precepts five prayers were established for Yom Kippur day of atonement in correspondence to the five visions that are drawn from Bina in correspondence to the people of the I Malchut which is Yud there are ten days of penitence the first day of Yud Hey Bob corresponds to the light of the people of the I drawn upon it from the Bob the five afflictions on Yom Kippur of not eating or drinking correspond to the last day of Yud Hey Bob 29 the next commandment is properly to sacrifice the sin offering ten name and Amram you have come from the aspect of the attributes of the Holy One blessed be he you have labored much to purify my daughter the Halachah namely Malchut from the clipot of the mixed multitude which are the evil questions which cannot be interpreted or explained away of them it says that which is crooked cannot be made
Craftsman that cuts the garment saying the Torah is lacking, stating that in this paragraph of the Mishnah A clause has been omitted yet it is written the Torah of Hashem is perfect Tehillim 198 perfect in all the members of the body the 248 positive precepts is written you are all fair my love there is no blemish in you sure Hashem 47 and perfect in her garments how can anything be lacking in the Mishnah 32 he answered say to him, look carefully and find the missing piece you may. Find it mixed with other verses and Mishnah height meaning it is the custom of the Torah to be lacking in one place and rich in another for it is the way of the craftsman to cut garments into several pieces and that which is missing in one place is filled up in another the students inexperienced in connecting the halacha to those pieces that are in another place confuse the sentences and questions and cannot explain the dilemmas until the craftsman comes and explains all the doubts they have at that time halacha the daughter namely Malchut rises before the king perfect in everything in body garments and jewelry and in it the verse comes true and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant bear sheet 916 sometimes the craftsman has an experienced student whom he sends to correct them namely Elijah as was mentioned before 33 they all rose and said faithful shepherd surely you are the craftsman for it says of you Moses received the Torah from Sinai from that Time onward everyone is your student from Joshua to the end of all generations this is what we learned that he transmitted it to Joshua Joshua to the elders the elders to the prophets to the end of all who is your skilled student mentioned above we see that it has been said to let everything wait until Elijah comes hence Elijah is your experienced student 34 he said to them surely it is so that Elijah is my companion student of whom it says the son of Aaron the priest Bimid bar 257 as said that pinches is Elijah as is said of Aaron and he shall be to you as a mouth Shema 416 similarly his son Elijah will be to me as a mouth for he will improve the oral Torah for just as I was slow of speech lit mouth and of a slow tongue so will the Holy One blessed be he raise me in the end of correction slow of speech in the oral Torah and of a slow tongue in the written Torah so that those who knew me not will not say it is someone else meaning as it has been said that the dead will rise with their defects so that it will not be said that it is someone else Elijah will be to me as a mouth to explain all those doubts and interpret them 35 at that time it says this Hebzad is the Torah of the burnt offering Hebelah Vayikra 62 namely the daughter who is Malchut that is called Zot and is called Torah who was degraded and humiliated in exile she rises Hebelah above all the grades above as written many daughters have done virtuously but you excelled them all. Mishlei 3129 she rises to Abba who is to the right and is Chesed of which it says that he who wishes to acquire wisdom should turn south namely Chesed which is in the south whence Chakma comes for during greatness Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and become Chakma Bina and that so that Chesed of Zeir and becomes Chakma which is Abba hence Chesed is from the south whence Chakma is from which is composed of the letters of Coach Mem Halit the strength of Mem Zeir and Bina. Secret of Yudhe Bab fully spelled with Aleph is which numerical value amounts to Mem 45 and she said that became Chakma is his strength 36 one ten said surely this is why it says of you that caused his glorious head Tiferet arm to go at the right hand of Moses Yeshaya 6312 since only through your bride called the arm of Tiferet you shall attain perfection when you are made perfect through her mouth it says of you with him I speak mouth to mouth manifestly lit inside and not in dark speeches Bimidbar 128 inside like a bride undressed of her garments unites with her husband in the proximity of flesh of her 248 body parts without covering any of them this is Bimara lit inside which is 248 in numerical value 37 the holy luminary namely Rabbi Shimon said the side was first revealed to you of which it says inside namely Malchut which is for you the great side of the bush as the bush is mentioned five times this is the secret of an A. Flame of fire out of the midst of the bush Shema 32 the side is now revealed to you with the 248 positive precepts which are the five books of the Torah and not in dark speeches are her garments through which the prophet saw her it is not the custom of the bride Malchut to be revealed in the flesh save before her groom Moses who could gaze into the shining mirror the secret of Shesedim of Zeir and the other prophets gaze into the mirror that does not shine namely her garments called dark speeches and also inwrought with gold and did not see her without those garments 38 at that time this verse and they were both naked the man and his wife and they felt no shame Bereshit 225 like Adam and his wife before the sin will be fulfilled in relation to them to Zeir and called Moses and Malchut for the evil mixture the mixed multitude which is a bad question namely evil judgments was already removed from the world there the nakedness of the Holy One blessed be he and the Shechina which I ask the nakedness of Israel and your nakedness faithful shepherd all the more and the nakedness of your Halacha Malchut for whose sake the mysteries of the Torah had to be concealed as written it is the glory of Elohim to conceal a thing Mishlei 252 until they are removed from the world there are no kings but Israel as it was explained that Israel are kings for at that time by the end of correction it says but the honor of kings namely Israel is to search out a matter. Ibid the faithful shepherd Moses said to Rabbi Shimon may you be blessed before Adikim and Keter once you are like a branch extending from the tree so are the souls its branches 39 the faithful shepherd said to them Tanaim and Amram surely the burnt offering the sin offering and guilt offering are three precepts which are the three fathers namely Chesed, Bira and Tiferet and the peace offering is the queen Malchut a body part of Zeir and namely its tenth sphere which completes every body part of Zeir and like the first day of the feast where a pilgrim's burnt offering is sacrificed by which Malchut ascends and completes each and every body part of Zeir and into tenth sphere 40 it says of whoever does not celebrate the first holiday of the feast who does not bring a pilgrim's burnt offering and holiday peace offering with which to attach Malchut to Zeir and and after the holiday he has not yet brought them that which is crooked cannot be made straight and that which is wanting cannot be numbered Kahilat 115 it is the sin offering namely a sin that detains the burnt offering as he detains Malchut from rising to Zeir and which is the secret of the burnt offering by not bringing pilgrims burnt offering sin is male and the sin offering female as both carry the same meaning at times the sin offering namely the sin is perfumed and separates from the burnt offering not holding Malchut from rising any longer by that he goat as it says and one kid of the goats for a sin offering Bimidbar 1524 41 the transgression for which a trespass offering for doubtful guilt is brought is attached to them both as if it is holding to this one and that and is suspended in the middle between them namely it damages the central column that contains right and left similarly everything is pending for Elijah to come and separate her Malchut from there from the clipot which will happen at the end of the correction so does the trespass offering for doubtful Guilt hold on to both damaging the right and the left until the other side is given its food and bribe from the trespass offering for doubtful guilt the other side will then be separated from it and the limbs of the bride namely the two columns right and left of Malchut come near each other guilt and sins are like adhesions to the lungs namely they are like membranes attaching the lobes of the lungs to each other not allowing Malchut to fly and ascend to Zeir and blow by the Holy Spirit. Or when 42 a lamb is sacrificed as a burnt offering is written but where is the lamb for a burnt offering Bereshit 227 it says of it your lamb shall be without blemish hetim of a male Shemot 125 as a plain hetim of man Bereshit 2527 meaning perfect also a lamb without a blemish means it is perfect being a burnt offering which is on the right the lamb is to the right and a he goat is to the left namely and one kid of the goats for a sin offering as goats have as I am indicate. Harsh Hebezim judgments of the left there is a he goat and there is a he goat namely one he goat for Hashem and one he goat for Azazel as written and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats one lot for Hashem and the other lot for Azazel Vayikra 168 it was concerning this he goat Hepsir that it says of Ezab that he is a hairy Hepsir man Bereshit 2711 this is the aspect of the liver Hepcab lit heavy which receives and absorbs all the yeast in the blood which are boiled smallpox skin sores and all kinds of leprosy hence it is written and the goat shall bear upon itself all their sins have Abinotum to a barren land Vayikra 1622 Abinotum is composed of the
Ahal child, I need to learn it. You said well that the goat sent to us is Elias on the left, but where is the pending sin offering? 44 He said to him, Blessed are you, my son. You asked well yet the central pillar with the right and left attached to it, which are Chisit and Gbira, is like a man's body holding two arms or an eagle with two wings attached to it, with which to fly for the face of an eagle is the central column of the four living creatures comprised of right and left. It is also similar to a dove, the secret of Malchut called Dove and Shir Hashirim, to which two wings are attached. She is likened to the Torah and her wings to the positive precepts, the secret of right and Chesedim, with which she rises and flies up to Zeir and Pen. In the same manner, the negative precepts, which are of the left and judgments, are her snares like birds caught in a trap, and all her snares keep her from flying up to Zeir and Pen, and by they are called adhesions, namely tissues attached to it. Lobes of the lungs of membranes that keep the wings of the lungs from blowing. 45 Such as the guilt offering for Yisrael are attached to the wings of the Sheshana, which are the living creatures carrying the throne. The sin offering prevents Malchut from ascending through them by the merits of Yisrael to the Holy One. Blessed be Zeir and Pen for their sin offerings detain her and make the wings heavy. The guilt offering is the mother of the mixed multitudes. It is the adhesion that is attached to the throne where the queen is not to the wings only like the sin offering. It does not let her go out from exile and the meritorious deeds of Yisrael hold onto her to raise her from exile. She therefore remains in the air like an adhesion suspended in the air, air being the central column, meaning she is suspended like an adhesion to the central pillar Zeir and Pen. Since due to the guilt offering she cannot be united with him save by guilt offering, it is therefore called a trespass. Offering for doubtful depending guilt since it is suspended in the air hence the guilt depends on the righteous yezid of Zeir and Pen where it damages and the guilt offering rectifies which is pending between heaven Zeir and Pen and earth Malchut and we consider it suspended between Zeir and Pen and Malchut therefore it is called trespass offering for doubtful depending guilt 46 the sin offering is the lobe of the liver head cap lid heavy since it lies heavy on Malchut with sins of the filthy iniquities of Israel as the liver burdens the arteries of the heart with yeast which is blood so those sin offerings lie heavy on the wings of the Shechina which are the positive precepts likened to the wings of the dove the negative precepts burden the positive as we said meaning that when the iniquities of Israel are more numerous than the merits it then says of the Torah the body namely Zeir and Pen called body and it casts down the truth to the ground Daniel 812 Malchut cries Hashem has delivered me into the hands of those against whom I am not able to rise up. Each 114 she is fallen, she shall no more rise. Amos 52 47. For that reason, the Tanaim and the Amram composed prayers in place of the sacrifices to remove sins and guilt from Malchut. That is why the Shacharit service was composed as the morning sacrifice, the prayer of Mincha as the evening sacrifice, and the Arbit prayer as the portions of the sacrifice and the fatty parts that were consumed on it. Alter all night, the three patriarchs who composed three prayers in correspondence with the chariot to which they are attached to are Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, as we said, are the very chariot. They four had the face of a lion on the right side, Yashis 110, which is Chesed, the face of the ox, Bura, and the face of an eagle, Tiferet, corresponding to them are the three prayers and of Rai Mahim, the 48. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Vayikra 66 Rabbi. She opened the discussion with the verse, and Isaac said to Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son, and he said, Behold the fire. Bear she 227. The word said is mentioned three times by Isaac and once by Abraham. Why is it so? He answers in correspondence with the three days of the creation. There were three said by Isaac. The one said by Abraham corresponds to the fourth day of creation as written, Here I am, my son. The absence of the words, and Abraham said, Here I am, my son, indicates that he said, I am in distress. This corresponds to the words, Let their be luminaries have me orat in the firmaments of heaven. Bear she 114, where the word me orat is spelled without vav me orot. curses a sign of the complaints of the moon. 49. You may say that the number of times said mentioned in this portion is more numerous. Why then should I speak of only four sets? He answers the others said mentioned in the portion are concealed in thought while. These four are revealed out of the darkness, and Isaac said to Abraham, corresponds to the verse, and Elohim said, Let there be light, and there was light also, and said, My father corresponds to the verse, and Elohim said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide water from water. Bear she 16, and he said, Behold, the fire corresponds to the verse, and Elohim said, Let the waters gather finally, and he said, Here I am, corresponds to the verse, and Elohim said, Let there be luminaries. Bear she 114, section 6, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. We learn that the fire of the Torah will never go out, for one may put out a precept like a candle, but not put out the Torah when a man commits a transgression, he puts out his own neshama. A transgression is truly darkness. A precept of the sages of the Torah is never extinguished because they shine upon the precept with mysteries of the Torah. Faithful Shepherd 50 We should also interpret the words The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar Vayi cross 66 This is the Torah called fire of which it says Is not my word like a fire Says Hashem Yermeah 2329 As it should always shine upon the altar Which is Malchut It shall never go out Vayi cross 66 Surely the fire of the Torah shall not go out Since a transgression does not put out the Torah But a transgression puts out a precept And he who commits a transgression puts out a Precept which is called a candle He thus puts out his candle from his own body Namely the soul that is called a candle Of which it says A man's soul is the candle of Hashem Mishle 2027 It is extinction indeed for the body remains in darkness He who causes the Sheshana to go away from her abode Through his actions brings about extinction and darkness Into that place a transgression is darkness And a handmaid that is heir to her mistress Mishle 3023 for a transgression that is a Handmaid and darkness inherits the place of the mistress, the Sheshana, which was removed from her place. 51 Regarding the ascension of a precept on the side of the common people who are without knowledge of the Torah, for them a transgression extinguishes a precept, the words, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. Ishmael 29 are fulfilled in them as for the sages of the Torah, their precept is never extinguished because they shine upon the precept with several mysteries of the Torah. For light is called a secret, whereas namely the numerical value of light had war, 207, which alludes to the secrets of the Torah being lights. The precepts of the Torah which the sages observe are considered in them to be just like the Torah, they will never be extinguished night or day because they observe in relation to her, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Yahashua 18, section 7 The smoke from the wood on the altar, we are told that by the order of it. Smoke and the cloud of incense of which the Torah Zir is the smoke Zir will rise in the heart by and rise to Chakma that resembles the brain it is like a cloud since a cloud stirs in the understanding heart the smoke is the central column that unites Chakma and Bina we hear of the scholars of the law who are from the side of the tree of life and who are thus called woods that will be burned with the flame of the Torah the constant daily offerings are the dimensions of God or the Sfirat and while all the Sfirat are one still a different one reigns on every Shabbat and feast 52 the smoke coming up from the mouths of the sages of the Torah with words of the Torah is like the smoke of the wood set on the altar the secret of Malchut called is set since she is set for her husband Zeir and this is so in the verse when you lightly raise the candles Bimid bar 82 which speaks of raising Malchut the secret of the candles to Zeir and as it says of them too. Cause lit raise the candle to burn always Shema 2720 namely Malchut called candle this is affected by the smoke of the wood set on the external altar as smoke is considered to be Malchut by the smoke from the wood and the cloud of incense in the internal altar of which the Torah Zeir and is the smoke Zeir and will awaken in the heart and rise to Chakma that resembles the brain for the heart and the brain are Chakma and Bina and the smoke from the wood on the inner altar which is Zeir and rises to them by means of main movement to unite Chakma and Bina it is like a cloud since a cloud stirs in the heart as written but there went up a mist from the earth there she 26 namely Zeir and called mist which is smoke will rise from Bina the secret of the supernal land and water the whole face of the ground before after
Parts of Malchut that is called body and called hay as the souls of the Torah scholars are the offspring of Zeir and Pen and Malchut. Most certainly, the intention I is to burn them with the flame of the Torah as it is written is not my word like a fire, says Hashem. Yermeyah 2329 By the flame of the candle we are commanded to light with love, namely by the flames of fire of love. For precepts 55 it is commanded to offer daily offerings every day and then kindle a fire as it is written a fire. Shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Vi cross 66 and then to remove the ashes from the altar and to bring a sacrifice for a vow or a voluntary sacrifice. Tanaim and Amram, all these daily offerings are the attributes of the Holy One. Blessed be he, namely the Sphirot, which should have rest. All the Sphirot are one, yet each and every sphere is appointed over specific Shabbat periods and holidays, namely on every Shabbat and feast a different sphere reigns the reigning attribute. At that time includes all the Sphirot, since each sphere includes all ten Sphirot, and they are all named after the reigning sphere. If it is Chesed, then Chesedim, and if Burah, then Burah. If the ruling sphere at a specific Shabbat time period is Chesed, then all ten Sphirot that are included in it are called Chesedim. If the ruling sphere at a specific Shabbat time period is Burah, then all ten Sphirot included in it are called Burah. Thus it is with all these ruling attributes. Section 8 Resting from work The section says that everyone whether they carry the yoke of the kingdom of heaven or the yoke of a heathen kingdom should rest from their work on Shabbat and holidays at the coming of Shabbat or a holiday by the descent upon the kingdom of heaven and is engraved upon the tablets Malchut we read of the signs of the name of Hashem and of the sign of the name Shaday that is Metatron called the servant we learn that the ignorant man should be generous. Toward the student of the Torah and observe the precepts and then God will preserve him from theft and robbery and the angel of death 56 all should rest from their work on Shabbat and holidays each according to its own aspect like the ox that carries a yoke and a donkey that carries a burden this is also the case among those who take upon themselves the yoke of the kingdom of heaven such as Tephilin they are exempt on Shabbat and holidays or the yoke of a heathen kingdom everybody according. To their actions have rest from their work for he who is not occupied with the Torah and the precepts takes upon himself the yoke of a heathen kingdom while he who is occupied in the Torah and precepts takes upon himself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven which is the last hay of Yud Hey Bob called the kingdom of heaven 57 surely it is the yoke of the precepts since all creatures that are in heaven and earth were created by it as the whole reality of the three worlds Briya Yitzra. Asiya came out of Malchut hence it says these are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created behind Ram Bereshit 24 which has the letters Behav Ram he created them with hay at the coming of Shabbat or a holiday by the descent which is Yehav Chakbabana and Adabana upon hay which is the kingdom of heaven which is then an additional Neshama and Shibana is engraved Hebshera upon the tablets Shema 3216 the tablets are Malchut and the inspiration of Bina upon her gives her freedom. Hebshera from all the Klippah. She is the secret of I am of the Exodus, namely the words I am Hashem your Elohim who has brought you out of the land of Egypt. Shema 202 Bina spread her wings upon the daughter Malchut and upon her camps, and they have rested. Says of the camps of Samael and the serpent, and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Hashem, and they shall be afraid of you. Devarim 2810 The name of Hashem is the sign of the Tefillin, but the sign of the Tefillin, the sign of the Shabbat, the sign of holidays, and the sign of the covenant are all the same. It says of all of them, and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Hashem. 58 There is the sign of the name Shaday, the angel Metatron called the servant. Several servants follow him. They are in charge over those who observe the precepts for the sake of reward over whom Metatron and his legions are in charge. Of them it is written that your ox and your donkey may rest and your slave and handmaid. Shema 2312 Those who do not observe the precepts for the sake of reward are the children of the king and queen Zeir and Pen and Malchut and on weekdays they are crowns and diadems on the heads of the mentioned servants of them. It says he that makes use of the crown shall perish for he who makes use of those children who are diadems to the servants departs and passes away from the world. The stranger who approaches them those sons shall die since on weekdays they are considered as Shabbat in relations to the servants. 59 For this reason we recite on music of Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year either as children or as servants either as children as it says you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 or as servants as written for to me the children of Israel are servants. Vayikra 2555 and not the other nations those wicked who are not occupied in the Torah and the precepts. And do not take upon themselves the yoke of the Torah and the yoke of the Tefillin and the other precepts are servants to the nations of the world that enslave them as in we were the slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt. Devarim 62160 If they observe the Shabbat and holidays it says of them and Hashem our Elohim brought us out of Egypt. The verse that says of them that your ox and your donkey may rest shall be fulfilled since they are like donkeys in relation to the Torah and the precepts. And the son of your handmaid and your cattle may be refreshed. The ignorant are called cattle for after one makes himself under the aspect of a man of the Torah. This verse shall be fulfilled. Hashem you preserve man and beast. Tehillim 367 That is this will be fulfilled if he is like a horse which is patient and does not kick him when his master rides on it. So should he behave like a horse under the knowledgeable student of the Torah. 61 Why should the ignorant be patient with a wise? Student, since the Torah scholar is like the Shabbat day, he should be as one who has nothing of his own as the weekdays make preparations for Shabbat and Shabbat has nothing if the ignorant man is generous toward him with his money and is in the habit of doing his wish to attend upon him and observe the precepts as he desires. Hashem, you preserve man and beast shall be fulfilled in him. He will preserve him from theft and robbery and from the angel of death so that he will have no power to slaughter him with his blemish knife. Whatever is slaughtered with the blemish knife is a carcass not slaughtered ritually of which it is written. You shall cast it to the dogs. Shema 2230, which is a male who is called a dog. Section 9, Nefesh Rash and Neshama of weekdays and of Shabbat. The faithful shepherd Moses says that the Nefesh of the learned scholar is called Queen Shabbat since it is the additional Nefesh bestowed on Shabbat. This additional Neshama is. Drawn from Abba and Ima who are the chariot to the cause of causes Eric Enpin which is totally concealed the additional Nefesh is watered by the additional Ruash that is Zir Enpin the river that flows from Eden we learn about the origin of the Neshama and the Ruash and also that the Ruash is the aspect of remember the Sabbath day and the Nefesh is the aspect of keep scholars of the Torah have nothing of their own and anyone who treats them with contempt is showing contempt toward the Shabbat and the festivals the wise student takes poverty upon himself because the Torah is food for man we see the correspondence between the four faces of man the four kinds of food and the four Sfirat Jesus Bura Tifera and Malchut a man should sacrifice offerings to confession and concentrate on destroying his bestial Nefesh so that he can bring out his Ruash the sages of the Mishnah taught that a man should always regard himself as though the whole world depended on him and as though he were balanced against all the people of the world. Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yitzhak talk about the river of fire, the burnt offering, a fiery stream, and the fire in the vision that Elijah saw. And after the fire, a silent fine voice refers to Malchut that is finer and smaller than all the Sfirot of Atzilut 62. The Nefesh of the Torah scholar is called Queen Shabbat since it is the additional Nefesh of Shabbat and its delight is the Neshama of life and the mental Ruash which are the additional Neshama, the Neshama of all living and a Ruash additional to the Neshama, Ruash and Nefesh, the servants that rule over the body during weekdays. The additional Neshama is the secret of the crown upon the head of the righteous who is the Shabbat day Zeir and been called the Shabbat day whose crown comes from Abba and Ima. This additional Neshama shall praise Yahweh which are Abba and Ima of whom it says neither has the I seen Elohim beside you. Yeshayah 643 since they are the chariot to the Cause of causes Eric Enpin which is concealed and over which the eye has no power therefore neither has the eye seen even in Abba and Ima who are its chariots from whom the additional Neshama of Shabbat is drawn being Keter
During weekdays comes from the throne of judgment, namely the world of Asiyah from Sandalphone, the secret of the blue and the tzitzit, the fringes, it is the secret of paved work, had of a sapphire stone, Shema 2410 derived from Asiyah, but the king's daughter, the mental nefesh of the wise student, Ayas on Passover, the secret of the night of watchfulness, Lal Shamira, the guarded matzah Shamira, as it is drawn from Malchut, called the night of watchfulness, and the guarded matzah to add to her stature. The corresponding guarded Rash the aspect of day is a holiday and the Shabbat day they are remember and keep the Rash is the aspect of remember which is Zeir and the Shabbat day Shema 208 and the Nefesh is the aspect of keep the guard Malchut the secret of the night of watchfulness and Shabbat night being the Nefesh of Atzala from Malchut 65 similarly the Torah scholars the children of the king and queen whose Nefesh is from Malchut of Atzala and whose Rash is from Zeir. And Ben of Atzala is mentioned above are called Shabbato and holidays and have nothing of their own the same as the Shabbat and holidays they are not working men like the other servants people of the three worlds Briya Yitzra and Asiya which are workdays their reward in this world and in the world to come is to delight them with all sorts of vittles and drinks and they are glorified with beautiful garments like the Shabbat of which it was said to honor with clean garments it behooves. Man to do everything he does for the glory of Shabbat and the holiday 66 he who desecrates the Shabbat is punishable by stoning and he who exploits the crown of Torah shall also perish he who makes use of one who recites the Halashah who desecrates the Torah and all the more so he who treats him with contempt is as if he shows contempt towards the Shabbat and the festivals the sages of the Mishnah taught us that he who treats the festivals contemptibly denies the basic doctrines of it. Faith 67 as all the vessels in the temple are called holy so are all those who attend on the Torah scholars called holy the students of the rabbi correspond to the members of the rabbi's body they are called the most holy or the holy of holies the secret of this is alluded to in the verse and the veil shall be for you as a division between the holy place and the most holy Shema 2633 Metatron you and your legions should bring them as offerings before Hashem every night 68 it. Deed one must do in order to take upon oneself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven is to take upon oneself the sorrows of poverty, which to the Torah student is the death of his animal body. The food of the Torah is the food of the mental nefesh, Amrash, and nefesh, which are the priest, the Levite, and Yisrael. A priest has the yad in him, which is Chachma. The Levite has the hey tevuna, and Yisrael have the bav The additional nefesh is the last hey of Yud hey bav hey malchut, including the two hundred and forty eight positive precepts and three hundred and sixty five negative precepts. The Torah is man's eir and ben as written. This is the Torah when a man have Adam. Bimid bar nineteen fourteen Adam, which is forty five in numerical value, includes the four letters of yad hey bav hey fully spelled with alas. The Torah is food for man with his four faces: the face of the lion, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and the face of a man, which are chesed, bira, tiferet, and malchut. Since man's face includes all of the four faces, this corresponds to the four. Kinds of food of the bestial body bread one meat and all sorts of fruit Elohim has made the one as well as or corresponding to the other Kahilat 714 for bread corresponds to the face of a lion namely cheese and wine to the face of an ox namely bureau meat to the face of an eagle namely typhoid and the fruit to the face of man Malchut 69 every night a man should sacrifice offerings before Hashem pertaining to the bestial nefesh rash and nesham a man should also confess several kinds of confessions and raise them in his thought when reciting the sh in order to bring them out as sacrifices before Hashem meaning he should concentrate upon bringing out his rash which pulses in the arteries of his heart he should concentrate upon burning slaughtering and piercing the nefesh like the priest who slaughtered by piercing is written and ring off its head from its nape but shall not divide it asunder vi prophet this is strangulation here one takes upon himself three kinds of Deaths burning and slaughtering which are considered slaying and slaughtered by piercing considered as strangulation these three deaths are red bile green bile and black bile and they lie in the liver the gallbladder and the spleen they are like the three shells of a nut 70 before that it behooves him to construct a kind of an altar of stone namely to concentrate on using it for stoning meaning he should take upon himself death by stoning this comes from the white bile which corresponds to chakma that governs the lobes of the lungs which also corresponds to chakma as was explained before namely those adhesions the clipot that glue the lobes of the lungs to each other so they cannot properly breath for these beasts namely as bestial nefesh rash and neshama are trapped there a blue fire then descends from malchut and consumes them and these bestial nefesh rash and neshama assume the appearance of pure animals cattle and birds that may be brought as sacrifices to Hashem so that his name will rest upon them at that time the verse which says of them but you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim are alive Devarim 44 will be fulfilled they will be like a horse with its master riding on it namely a chariot to Hashem as written that you ride upon your horses your chariots of salvation Shabbat 38 then Hashem you preserve man and beast Tehillim 367 which are the mental nefesh rash and neshama called man and the bestial nefesh rash neshama called beast 71 come and behold man should also regard himself as balanced against the students of the Torah thus he should weigh himself on the side of the Torah namely the mental nefesh rash neshama and the side of the limbs in the body namely the side of the bestial nefesh rash and neshama he should regard himself as balanced against all the peoples of the world as taught by the sages of the mission a man should forever see himself as if the whole world depends upon him he should Therefore concentrate upon his nefesh rash and neshama to make them into sacrifices together with all the inhabitants of the world and the holy one blessed be he joins a goodly thought to a deed this way Hashem you preserve man and beast all the ten and Amram rose towards him and said in one voice you are a faithful shepherd and you have permission to do all this because you are balanced against all Israel the holy one blessed be he therefore sent you amongst the men of Arai. May him the tisifta addendum 72 this is the Torah of the burnt offering may I cross 62 Rabbi Shia said we explained this verse in the following manner this is the Torah is the congregation of Israel the burnt offering is an evil thought that occurs to man to turn him away from the true way and it is the burnt offering let rising of it since it rises and accuses man it should therefore be burnt by fire in order not to let it bring accusations therefore it shall be upon the altar all. Night of it, what is night? It is the congregation of Israel named at the beginning of the verse this so as to purify man of that desire 73 which shall be burning of it, namely in the Hurdider, the river of fire, since the river of fire is where all those who are not found as they ought to be are burning, they are brought into that burning fire and their government is removed from the world in order for it not to have power, it should be upon the altar all night, it is then subdued and loses its power. End of this of the 74 it is written, and behold, Hashem passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains. I may 1911 the great wind, as we said, the storm wind standing before everything to guard holiness as the skull protects the brain, it is also written, but Hashem was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake had bar ash what is the quake? It is like the one mentioned in the verse, and a spirit also wind took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing of Arayash saying, Blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place. Yashiskal 312. Thus great quaking comes after the wind like the tumult of Elijah. It is explained here that the shaking was because they said, Blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place and after the earthquake of fire. What is the fire? It is like that in the verse. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Daniel 710. This is the fire. Elijah saw 75 concerning the fire. Elijah saw Rabbi Yitzhak. Said it is written as for the likeness of the living creatures. Their appearance was like coals of fire burning like the appearance of torches. It goes among the beasts and flashes into fire and out of the fire went forth lightning. Yashiskal 113. This is the fire. Elijah saw and these living creatures are a chariot to Malchut for it is written and after the fire a still small voice. The voice is the last voice namely Malchut which is silence having nothing of her own. It is silent by herself. Since Malchut has nothing of her own nor does she receive anything but everything is given to her by Zeir and when the Sfirot of Zeir and gather about her to give her abundance her voice is heard throughout all the worlds namely all the worlds Briya Yitzra and Asiya receive from
Out to the east side one glowing coal to the west side one glowing coal to the north side and one glowing coal to the south side that are Chisip Burit Tiferet and Malchut to the four corners of the altar the priest returns it to the four corners 78 on the altar there is a ramp namely a step on which the priests stand when they serve on the altar it has certain grades of secret of the seven Tiferet, Chisip Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadyazit and Malchut, and the lowest grade Malchut reaches. Down to the upper abyss by of the clip through a certain hole that reaches from it to the abyss when the burning coals reach the four corners of the altar a fiery spark stirs and descends through that hole into the upper abyss from this spark the clip it gets strength to punish the wicked 79 on that place namely on the ramp there are legions upon legions of celestial beings of the right column she said that say holy in a great supernal voice on another side they who are from it left column viewers say holy in a supernal pleasant voice on another side there are other legions of the central column typhoret that say holy and so on in the four corners of the ramp there are six billion legions six being the secret of chisip viewer typhoret net sash hot and yezid the illumination of bina the secret of hundreds from chakma the secret of thousands from keter the secret of ten thousands and from the aspect of yezid comes the secret of legions namely there is upon them it. illumination of the first three spirot they are on every corner of the ramp and over them there is an appointee they all wear an ephod in the secret of the priestly clothes and they stand on the ramp to carry the service of the altar malchud which corresponds to the lower beings in the temple 80 on another place opposite the ramp there are rumbling sea waves this is the secret of and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves there are ten thousand seven hundred and twenty five which is a meaning and after the Wind and earth descending through certain grades where the legion say in a pleasant voice, Blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place. Yashis call 312. This is the secret of, and I heard behind me a voice of great rushing saying, Blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place, since they slaved before those armies that are situated on the ramp of the altar and say, Holy, holy, holy. This is the secret of facing them. They give praise saying, Blessed is the glory of Hashem from his place. They all praise with hymns and are never silent day and night. All offer praises in a pleasant voice. 81. On another place there are legions upon legions standing with fear, trembling, and dread as written. They were so high that they were dreadful that they had fear. Yashis call 118. Those who say, Holy, correspond to Chisa, the right column. Those who say, Blessed, correspond to Gura, the left column. Those present correspond to Tiferet. They all look to namely receive bounty from the altar above. Malchut 82 When Isaac's fire the judgments of the left column reaches the altar several sparks go up and down on every side and some of the mighty powerful warriors of the world are set aglow by them were it not for the priest who stood upon the altar arranging the wood the world would not have been able to withstand them the backs of the living creatures are set ablaze from those glowing coals and sparks that come from them as written as for the likeness of the living creatures there. Appearance was like coals of fire burning like the appearance of torches of 1383 on the right side of these living creatures a wind stirs from above from she of Zeir and blowing and settling upon that fire of the living creatures it blazes up and becomes perfumed and glows silent with a precious splendor shining upon several legions posted on the right side on the left side of the living creatures another strong wind stirs from Bura of Zeir and it breaks rocks and blows into that fire of the living creatures it grows stronger and mightier until that wind of the left side of Zeir and is encompassed by that fire and shines upon several legions that stand on that side the left side of the creatures thus from the four corners, Chisit Bura Tiferet and Malchut, in relation to the four legions from the four corners, Chisit Bura Tiferet and Malchut of Zeir and four winds come upon the four legions of Chisit Bura Tiferet and Malchut of the living creatures. All are perfumed when the priest ascends to the altar section 11 two altars Rabbi Abba speaks about the two altars below and the two altars above the golden altar above is the bond of faith and the brass altar above is where the archangel Michael gives sacrifice to God Rabbi Abba tells us about the meaning of the inner altar and the outer altar there is some disagreement among the rabbis about the number of altars and Rabbi Shimon finally clarifies by saying that there are indeed two altars the inner stands over the outer and the outer is sustained by the inner they are mutually tied together Rabbi Shizkiah turns to the issue of impending judgment and says that since a man never knows when judgment will rest upon him and he might die he must always keep himself from sinning 84 Rabbi Abba said there are two altars below and two altars above of the two upper altars one is innermost where inner fine incense is burned which I ask the bond of faith the highest priest ties this incense to the bond of faith it is called the golden altar once the bond of faith is tied and offered that unites everything into one not the other altar is called the brass altar it is outside and Michael the great minister sacrifices upon it a savory offering to the holy one blessed be he the two altars down below in the temple are the golden altar and the brass altar one for incense and the other for tallow and the portion of the sacrifice is 85 it is therefore written Oil and incense rejoice the heart. Mishlei 279 and not oil tallow and the portions of the sacrifice rejoice the heart. Though they too soothe the wrath and judgment like the oil and incense there is a difference. The oil and incense which allude to the union of Chakma and Bina. As oil is Chakma and incense Bina. Gladden all and are not of the side of wrath and judgment for they have in them no judgment at all. The tallow and portions of the sacrifice are not so for through them. It. Union between Zeir and Pen and Malchut is done. It does not say of them rejoice the heart because judgment may have hold upon them. This is the inner altar where the finest frank incense Bina which is inconceivable because of her fineness is in the bond of faith being tied to Malchut called faith. The altar is called a still small voice being the inner altar that is tied by the bond of faith. 86 The other altar is called the other altar. The inner one is called the altar of Hashem and the other is the brass altar as written because the altar of brass that was before Hashem was too little to receive. I may 864 Rabbi Yossi said it is understood from the words and whole burnt sacrifice upon your altar. Devarim 3310 that altar may be read in the plural namely 2 it is also written your altars Hashem tzbaot tzbaot 844 namely 287 Rabbi Yossi disagrees with Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Yossi and says there is but one altar which is sometimes called inner and sometimes outer as was said before he says it is written and Moses built an altar Shemot 1715 he built this in correspondence to the inner one so it is called Yud Hei Bob lit my banner since the inner one is called the altar of Yud Hei Bob my banner because he inscribed and established the mark of the sign of the holy covenant when Amalek wanted to remove the sacred mark namely of circumcision from Israel the altar Malchut stood before them to avenge that sign of it. Covenant Malchut is therefore called the sword avenging the covenant and this Malchut validated this holy mark on Israel Moses and built an altar for this and called it Yud Hei this is the inner altar that is called a still small voice 88 of the inner altar it says the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar Vai cross 66 which is the ever present fire what is it it is Isaac's fire namely the judgments of the left column which are always present and the altar is Named Adonai namely of the aspect of judgment it is then called the outer altar when the priest arranges that wood upon it which is chesedim by which the left column is enclosed the altar's name is perfumed and called by the name of mercy yet hey named after the altar of yud hey hey it is then the internal altar the altar sometimes stands like this in the aspect of judgment and it is then the external altar and sometimes it stands in the aspect of mercy and it is then the internal altar but they are not two separate altars rabbi shimon said there are two the inner standing over the outer altar and the outer sustained by the inner and both are mutually tied section 12 the name el rabbi shizkiah wonders about the name el which should always be of chesed but seems sometimes to be of judgment rabbi shimon explains that the wicked turn mercy into judgment the further question arises of an el who is angry every day and rabbi shimon answers that if people have merit the name L prevails but if they do not the name mighty prevails so for those who are wicked L is angry every day a better explanation however is that L prevails daily because it is universally the illumination of the supernal wisdom the existence of everything is due to the fact that L pushes the decree away every day and to the fact that Abraham awakened and pushed away all the verdicts Rabbi Shimon explains the meaning of wonderful
Judgment goes out before him as written righteousness shall go before him. Tehillim 8514 Men should therefore hasten to ask for mercy before the king to be saved from the judgment when it dwells upon the world for each and every day judgment dwells in the world as it says and an L who has indignation every day. Tehillim 71291 Now is the time to raise a question we learned and the friends remarked that the name L is always of Jesus as written the great Eldebarim 1017 This is the Illumination of the supernal chakma since Jesus rises to become supernal chakma when Zeir infant is in greatness you say and an L who has indignation every day Tehillim 712 in which the verse disregards all those names that indicate Jesus and holds onto this judgment the words are not true then it is also written the mighty Elisha 95 it is difficult since we should either establish that the name L is of judgment or that the name L is of mercy 92 he answers I have heard this that the wicked turn mercy into judgment for throughout the supernal spirot of the holy king there are none in which mercy is not included within judgment and judgment within mercy the wicked turn mercy into judgment hence though the name Elias Jesus the wicked turn it into judgment 93 Rabbi Yehuda said to him this is a good explanation that says a mighty elephant because for the wicked it turns into judgment but of the verse and an L who has indignation every day Tehillim 712 what? Do you say of its meaning, that he is of judgment each and every day whether people in the world be righteous or not he was not able to explain it they went to ask Rabbi Shimon he said to them assuredly L has indignation every day it has already been explained by the friends that the name L is now judgment and then mercy if people of the world have merit the name L prevails as Jesus if they have no merit it prevails by the name mighty that is on a daily basis every day some are meritorious and others are not hence for those who are not and an L who has indignation every day Tehillim 712 94 the better explanation is that L is universally the illumination of the supernal chakma namely Jesus it prevails daily as written the mercy of L endures continually Tehillim 523 were it not for the awakening of the name L in the world the world would not have endured for an instant under the harsh judgments daily aroused in the world hence these are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created. Beersheet 24 Do not read it. Be Abraham lit when they were created. But as be Abraham lit by Abraham who is Jesus heaven and earth remain through Abraham awakening when Abraham stirred himself in the world who is the attribute of Jesus he pushed out all the judgment that are present each and every day and they could not stand against him. 95 And an L who has indignation every day it does not say he is angry or made so but that he has indignation for each and every day that there is a decree he pushes it outside and he remains to perfume the world hence it is written Hashem will command his love in the daytime. Tehillim 429 Were it not for this the world would not have been able to remain even for a single moment the existence of everything is therefore due to Abraham who is Jesus. 96 The words of mighty Elisha 95 do not mean that the name El is mighty but the verse alludes to the patriarchs Jesus Bura. And Tiferet and alludes to the supernal holy faith by as written wonderful counselor Almighty Al the everlasting father prince of peace Yeshaya 95 supernal chakma is a wonder hidden from everything is written if there arises a matter too hard lit wonderful for you in judgment Devarim 178 wonderful in the meaning of hidden counselor is the supernal river that is drawn and flows out and never stops by it counsels to and waters everything El is Abraham as we explained that the great El is Jesus mighty is Isaac as it does not say the mighty it does not say the mighty El like the great El but a mighty El which means that mighty is not an attribute of El but a specific name indicating Isaac namely the attribute of viewer the everlasting father is Jacob who holds to the side right and that side left whose existence is whole for everlasting father alludes to wholeness prince of peace is the righteous namely is it the peace of the world household peace the Queen's Peace 97 Rabbi Shizkia and Rabbi Yehuda came to him and kissed his hands they wept and said happy is our portion for asking this happy is the generation that you dwell in their midst section 13 Zay and Zot Rabbi Shimon explains that the purpose of the sacrifices brought by Aaron and his sons is to bring together Zot Malchut and Zazer and Ben that are separated by the wicked in the world 98 Rabbi Shimon said it is written this is the sacrifice of Aaron and his sons which they shall offer to Hashem Vayikra 613 come and behold the wicked in the world cause the Holy One blessed be he to depart from the congregation of Israel hence it is written a perverse man south strife and a mischief maker separates close friends Mishlei 1628 who is the close friend it is the Holy One blessed be he has written you are the close friend of my youth here Mayah 34 they separate Zot this fem Malchut from Zay this mask Zeir and Ben which is household Peace namely is they who are united together 99 the holy Aaron and his sons came by their efforts the two were brought near and Zay Zeir and joins Zot Malchut hence with this Hebzot shall Aaron come into the holy Vayikra 163 and this Hebzay is the sacrifice of Aaron and his sons they make the holy supernal king Zeir and with the matron Malchut through them the upper and lower are blessed and blessings abound in all the worlds and everything is one without separation 100. You may ask why it does not say this Hebzot is the sacrifice which means drawing near Zot Malchut to her place Zeir and why does it say Zaylit this is the sacrifice Vayikra 613 which only alludes to Zeir and it is Malchut that we should draw near Zeir and and not the other way round he answers this is not so when the priest brings the sacrifice below the priest above referring to the sphere of Jesus begins to bring about the union to the congregation of Israel Malchut until he Reaches say denoting Zeir and and attaches it to Zot indicating Malchut and brings them together as the priest below draws Malchut near Zeir and so does the priest above draws Zeir and near Malchut the priest therefore completes the sacrifice and brings about the mating happy is their portion in this world and in the world to come section 14 Zion and Jerusalem Rabbi Yossi speaks about the masculine and feminine referrals to Zion and Jerusalem their inner and outer aspects and their aspects of mercy and judgment he then wonders whether there could be defilement above to correspond to the defilement below Rabbi she answers that deeds are stirred above by deeds below he says that there is no good and evil or holiness and defilement without its essence and root above and the same is true of those things that depend on words 101 Rabbi she and Rabbi Yossi walk together from Mishat to Tiberias Rabbi she has said it is written for Hashem has chosen in Zion he has desired it for his habitation this Hebzot is my resting place forever here will I dwell for I have desired her Tehillim 13213 to 14 he asks sometimes the friends address the name Zion in the masculine since Zion is it of Malchut is mercy yet here the scripture addresses it in the feminine as written he has desired it for his habitation have mass for I have desired her 102 Rabbi Yossi said I have heard from the holy luminary that when the Zeir and Pen and Malchut mate and are joined together in order to show that the Nukba is included within Zeir and Pen into one whole the Nukba is then called by the name of the male and the blessings of Malchut abide and there is no division in her at all it is therefore written his habitation in the masculine it is also written for Hashem has chosen in Zion in Zion is accurate which means inside Zion namely the one that is within her and dwells in her namely the inner of Malchut it therefore does not say to Zion which would refer to its outer side hence everything is one whether it is in the masculine or in the feminine since everything is the same and of the same grade the scripture therefore addresses it sometimes in the masculine and sometimes in the feminine namely for I have desired her 103 it is therefore written but of Zion it shall be said man and that man was born in her tail 875 it says man twice one of judgment and another of mercy is it of Malchut called Zion contains two aspects which are judgment and mercy that judgment in her is called Jerusalem yet when Zeir and, and Malchut are united together in one nation Yezid of Malchut is then called only by the name Zion Zion and Jerusalem are then known in this manner with Zion the inner side of Yezid of Malchut and Jerusalem the outer side of Yezid of Malchut thus they are interdependent section 15 by an action below an action above is awakened Rabbi she says that any vocalized word Below arouses another pronouncement from above that is called the word of Hashem. Good arouses good and evil arouses evil. 104 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse Sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy. Vayikra 270 He who sanctifies himself below is sanctified from above. He who defiles himself below is defiled
Defilement without its essence and root above through the deed below a deed above is roused depending on the deed a deed is roused above and the deed is done and whatever depends upon words occurs through words for when a word is pronounced below it is so roused above 107 you may ask in relation to words what is aroused above he answers it is written nor speaking of vain matters little word Yeshua 5813 that word arouses another pronouncement from above which is called word namely. Malchut is written the word of Hashem Hashi 11 and the word of Hashem was precious Ishmael 31 and by the word of Hashem were the heavens made Tehillim 336 all of these allude to Malchut called word Hevdabar for we learned that man's word rises piercing firmaments until it rises to its place and arouses that which it arouses if it is good then good is aroused if it is evil then evil is aroused namely it either arouses Malchut of holiness or Malchut of defilement to influence him it is. Therefore written and keep you from every evil thing had Dabar Debarim 2310 section 16 the four kinds and Hashan Arabah this essay tells about the three bows of myrtle the two willows of the lava and the Atrog these are waved to observe the precept and then the seven Sfirot above are stirred we read of the infinite flow of abundance down through the Sfirot from Bainat to Malchut the congregation of Israel waving the fresh branches draws blessings to this world. Rabbi Yussi says that on the seven days of Sukkot actions are needed not just words and he emphasizes the number seven in regard to voices Sfirot days and times that the altar must be circled Rabbi Shia explains that the illumination of Chakma comes down and is revealed only with judgment through the deed and sacrifice of the priest below both the upper and lower are corrected on the day that God orders the verdict's judgments are brought to an end and the evil tongue is ended in the world God pronounces a decree and then it is referred to as though the punishment has already happened although it is still to come he tells of the necessity for the priests the levites and the children of Israel to participate in the sacrifice so that their transgressions will be atoned for 108 there are four kinds in the lalab which are seven namely three bows of myrtle and two bows of willow lalab and the it may be argued that there are seven kinds but it is not so for there are four divided into three more the myrtle into three and the willows into two thus two were added to the myrtle and one to the willow hence there are seven through the action of waving them to observe the precept other seven are stirred above the seven sfirot chesed bira tiferet net sash and malchut the three bows of myrtle correspond to chesed bira and tiferet the two bows of willow to net sash and had the lalab to yesed and etheric to malchut all are to do good for the world in several Respects through the above mentioned seven Sfirot 109 although it is part of the seven Sfirot the congregation of Israel Malchut is blessed from all the six Sfirot above her Malchut, Chesed Vira Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid, and from the deep river that is drawn from its source these waters never stop to be drawn to the six Sfirot, Chesed Vira Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid she suckles the daughter Malchut for she is her daughter the daughter of the supernal world by and the lower world Zeir and, and receives blessings from them when they stir when they bless the congregation of Israel all the worlds are blessed for they receive from her hence the encircling of the altar as we learned on the seven days of the feast of Sukkot holiday of the booth since the altar corresponds to Malchut which receives from Bina and Zeir and, and by the seven circling she is filled with the seven Sfirot 110 moreover by the stirring by waving the four kinds all six Sfirot. Namely, Chesed, Bira, Tiferet, Net, Sash, Hot, and Yezid, are blessed with water, namely abundance, and are satisfied with it. They all draw from the source of the deepest river Bina and take it down to the world. All the four kinds therefore need to be fresh, not dry, since fresh refers to their being full to abundance to draw blessings to the world. Those trees, Myrtle, Willow, and Lalab are always fresh, and their leaves are ever present in the tree, whether summer or winter, the time of their joy is on it. Seven days of Sukkot 111, we learned in the book of Rabham Nanasabah that the minister appointed over those trees of the four kinds each receive joyful blessings from above, only at that time they all rejoice above, and the rejoicing of those trees is below. At the time of the days of Sukkot, their stirring depends upon the holy men of the king, namely upon Yisrael waving the Lalab. When Yisrael wave them, everything is stirred at that time, and the world Malchut is blessed and pours blessings upon. This world 112 it is written the voice of Hashem is upon the waters El of glory Tehillim 293 Rabbi Yossi said this is Abraham namely the attribute of Chesed the voice of Hashem is powerful before is its hot namely Bura the voice of Hashem is full of majesty before is Jacob namely Tiferet the voice of Hashem breaks the cedars Ibit 5 is Netzach the voice of Hashem divides the flames of fire Ibit 7 is hot the voice of Hashem shakes the wilderness Ibit 8 is the righteous Yezid and the voice of Hashem makes the hinds to cap Ibit 9 is righteousness namely Malchut they all grow by the sea by and are given water namely the abundance of Bina in order to grow hence it says and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Bereshit 210 they all arouse blessings to the world by the drink they give all 113 come and behold these seven voices Chesed Bura Tiferet Netzach Hot Yezid and Malchut depend upon the words of the mouth throughout the year but on it. Seven days of Sukkot they depend only upon deed we need then an action not a speech since during the time of the seven days of Sukkot the whole year is blessed 114 on the seventh day of the feast namely Hashanah the judgment of the world comes to an end sentences are sent from the king's house and Gbirat are aroused and ended on that day the willows of the brook depend upon them these Gbirat one needs to arouse the Gbirat toward the water and to circle the altar which corresponds to Malchut seven times against Chesed Gbirat Tiferet Net Sash and Malchut in order to imbue the altar with its hox water namely with the illumination of Chakma of the left column called Isaac that water will fill Isaac's well namely Malchut that when she receives from the left it is called by that name when she is filled the whole world is blessed with water 115 on that day Hashanah there is need of Gbirat in order to draw water the secret of the mentioned illumination. Of Chakma, which is drawn only together with Burat and judgments, and to conclude them later on that day, judgment is concluded as there is no further need to draw the illumination of Chakma drawn through judgment, hence one needs to beat the willow boughs on the ground and end them, namely their illumination, so there will not be any on that day. There is a stirring of Chakma and the conclusion of Chakma, and we make use of the willows of the brook which alludes to Netzach and Hot through. Which Chakma is revealed by means of judgments 116. Rabbi Shia said this is surely so, and it is well spoken. The willows of the brook are so called because from the side of the brook, namely by Burat, come out, namely the illumination of Chakma with their judgments on that day, they are aroused and ended of that day. It is written, and Isaac dug again the wells of water. Bear she 2618. The word Burat Lid wells is written without the Bob since it alludes to Malchut called Wellheb. Beer what is again the first day of the month namely on Rosh Hashanah is the day of the beginning of judgments throughout the world and Isaac the secret of the left column rose to the throne of judgment to sentence the world on that day of Hashanah Rabbi Isaac again stirred the decrees and brought verdicts to an end Isaac dug the wells of water namely he poured Burat upon the congregation of Israel which is Malchut called well in order to arouse the water the secret of the illumination of Chakma water descends upon the world through Burat namely the illumination of Chakma comes down only coupled with judgment 117 since these Burat descend only by means of clouds which are judgments and on a cloudy day the wind of the pillars of the world rests upon them only since it must be so since the world needs them why is it so because the world was created through decrees namely on Rosh Hashanah hence judgments should always be revealed together with water which means that Illumination of Chakma so the wicked will not get hold OT the left column and bring back the judgments of Rosh Hashanah and everything must be this way because it all depends upon actions therefore through the deed and correction that the priest does below namely the action of sacrificing the upper and lower are aroused to be corrected and are corrected by him in the same manner through the deed of the four kinds and the willow of Hashanah Rabbi Chakma is corrected by means of judgments which are revealed together with it so that the wicked will not be able to take hold of IT 118 Rabbi Yossi said we learned that the willow resembles lips on that day what is the meaning of this Rabbi Shia said this is only according to homiletic interpretation yet it is surely so it depends upon lips since on the day that the king orders the verdicts given to the officer in charge of them
Scripture testifies to it as if it has already been performed though it has not yet been executed it therefore says and laid its mountains waste, since I have already considered in my verdict and it will be carried out in due time this is also true for the goodness he decreed for Israel and that it will be in done its time as written I Hashem have spoken and have done it Yashiskel 1724-121 and this Hebzad is the Torah of the guilt offering Vayikra 71 and this Hebzad is the Torah of the meal offering Vayikra 67 and this Hebzad is the Torah of the peace offerings Vayikra 711 and this Hebzad is the Torah of the sin offering Vayikra 618 Rabbi Yitzhak said it has been explained that down below Zad is within everything and up above Zad is within everything since Zot Malchut includes all lights from her and above since she receives them all into her also below she gives abundance to all the worlds from her and downwards and she includes them all the name Zot therefore appears in connection with all these sacrifices as she includes them all he who is occupied in the Torah takes her Malchut as his portion entirely and joins with all her aspects the guilt offering the meal offering the peace offering and the sin offering hence he need not bring a sacrifice for himself as we have already learned section 17 the three grades over the offering 122 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion saying the priest said not where is Hashem they that handle the Torah knew me not and the rulers also transgressed against me. Your Mayot 28 the priests refers to those who serve as high priests bring the holy words to their place and bring everything into a union properly. They that handle the Torah who are they that handle the Torah if the priests do not handle the Torah he answers these are the Levites who handle the lyre that comes from the side of the Torah the Torah was given through their side the left side pure and they are in charge over singing the praises of the holy king to properly unify him in complete union the shepherds also transgressed against me but these are the ministers of the people who lead the people like a shepherd leads his flock 123 these are the three grades namely the three columns right left and central which always need to be found by the sacrifice so that there will be goodwill above and below and so that there will be blessings in all the worlds the priest brings a sacrifice and concentrates upon uniting the holy name in a proper manner and he awakens his own side the right side she said the lovets concentrate on awakening their own side the left side viewer through singing to be included within the priest's side Israel who are the shepherds the central column type for a concentrate with their hearts and desires upon complete repentance and they submit before the holy king who takes everything thus are their transgressions atoned for and joy abides in the upper end lower realm section 18 who lays beams of his chambers in the waters rabbi yehuda tells about the time that god created the world dividing the waters into two and establishing the world upon the lower half and making a firmament between the two halves he says that legions of angels were established to sing praises some in the daytime and some at night and that the abysses on the other side were also established where the angels of destruction dwell and where the River of fire runs the rising smoke from the altar feeds the side of holiness and the other side as well. 124 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters. Tehillim 1043 When the Holy One blessed be he created the world he took it out of the water and arranged it upon water. What did he do? He divided the water into two halves a half below and a half above and did certain things with them with the lower half he made and established this. World he set it on this half and established the world above it hence it is written for he has founded it upon the seas. Tehillim 242 He raised the other half and paneled it with high ceilings hence it is also written who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters. 125 He made a firmament between these two halves as it says let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Bear sheet 16 on them he formed and arranged supernal holy angels from his mouth's breath as is written and all. The host of them by the breath of his mouth Tehillim 336 126 with these angels he established and arranged those who sing his praises by day they mix with flames of fire these hosts of armies sing by day praises in the morning and hymns in the evening when night comes they all stop singing because other angels sing at night as those who sing by day do not do so by night above them there are legions of fire of a strong flame they smell the consuming fire and return to their places. 127 there are on the other side namely with the clipot abyss is the one on top of the other an upper abyss bind of the clipot and a lower abyss malchute of the clipot opponents of the side of harsh judgment abide in all of them in the aspect of the lower abyss there are flares that burn sparks of fire which are in charge over decrees in the world and they burn the wicked in the fire that is drawn from the river of fire they are all fire and their appearance is of scorching flames they stand. Between the upper and the lower realms 128 when the smoke rises from the altar those demons whose function is to destroy and annihilate are removed and lost from that grade namely the lower abyss that flow of strong fire from the river of fire which is strong and high goes back to its place and all external forces enjoy the smoke from the altar because it was established in respect to the supernal altar this is the reason why they enjoy it they draw that smoke near the smoke of it. Portions of the sacrifice and the fats that are consumed by night from which the external forces are fed another smoke rises as we explain the smoke that rises from the sacrifices by day which is meant for holiness for the smoke feeds each and every one whether it pertains to holiness or to the other side it is the goodwill of everything that rises above since it gives pleasure to the holy king section 19 a fire of the altar crouches like a lion we are told that the Priests and people could see that the offering was welcome to God by the appearance of a lion crouching in the fire on the altar. This fire is the angel Uriel. If the sacrifice was unworthy, the shape of a dog appeared in the fire. Instead, 129, we learned that when Uriel was seen upon the altar in the likeness of a mighty lion that crouches on its prey, the priests and Israel saw and were glad, for they knew that their sacrifice was welcome to the holy king. Another fire, holy and supernal, came down from above, which is the angel Uriel against the lower fire kindled on the altar. The man would then go trembling before his master and complete repent. 130, this is like a king to whom the people sent a gift which was welcome to him. He said to his servant, Go and take this gift which they brought me. So did the holy one bless be. He said to the angel Uriel, Go and take the gift which my children offered me. How much joy and sweetness was in everything when the priests love it and he who Brought the sacrifice were intent upon sacrificing the offering properly in complete union 131 come and behold it is written and there came out a fire out from before Hashem and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering Vayikra 924 this fire is Uriel who came down with the appearance of a scorching flame until he rested on the altar to receive the gift the sacrifice he looked like a great lion crouching on the sacrifice 132 when Israel were not found worthy or when he who brought the sacrifice did not do so properly and his sacrifice was not accepted they saw the smoke rising unevenly a certain wind from the hole of the clipot on the north came to the altar and they saw the shape of an impudent dog crouching on the offering they then knew that the sacrifice was not welcome 133 this is like a king to whom they sent a gift that was not worthy of being brought before him the king said take away that gift and give it to the dog because it is not worthy of being brought before me when the sacrifice is brought and it is not accepted it is given to the dog this is why they saw the shape of the dog on the altar 134 come and behold it is written and there came a fire out from before Hashem and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering Vayikra 924 Rabbi Yehuda said this is Uriel who looks like a scorching flame upon the altar as he crouches on the sacrifice as we learned and all rejoiced since it was willingly accepted as written and the glory of Hashem appeared to all the people of the 23 were it not for the confusion brought by the death of Aaron's sons on that day there would not have been since the day they left Egypt the greater satisfaction above and below section 20 burning of holy things the section tells us that when the children of Israel are in trouble they are saved for Isaac's sake the ashes of Isaac rise before God and therefore the sacrifice needs to be burned to ashes we hear of the three fires to the Candle white black and blue corresponding to the priest's love and children of Israel blue is the judgment that eats sacrifices and burnt offerings a person should repent before he dies when the angel Michael who is the high priest ritually slaughters him we hear of how the nefesh the rash and the nesham are affected at death one should concentrate his thoughts on saying a confession and accept death with one heart then we hear of the qualities of the priest and how wisdom and mercy are essential qualities of the learned scholar who rules over his own body and over his bestial nefesh rash and nesham since he is righteous God does not reward him for his good deeds he is poor but is constantly
He saved for his sake. This is only a homiletic interpretation. You may also say it was for the sons of Aaron that were like the burning of holies, of whom it is written, and a fire went out from before Hashem and devoured them, and they died. Vayikra 102. Their deaths atoned for Israel like the burning of holies. This is also a homiletic interpretation. 136. He answers. There are three fires to the candle: a white fire, a black fire, and a blue fire, conforming to the Torah, the prophets, and it. Writings which correspond to the priest's levites and Yisrael blue corresponds to the Sheshana which is near us as she dwells among the lower beings she holds onto those wicks the wings of a precept of which it says that they shall make them tzitzit bimidbar 1538 the blue is the Sheshana the judgment that eats sacrifices and burnt offerings 137 if she malchute the secret of blue finds men to be as dry wood like dry wicks without oil which is the Torah and mercy malchute is a fire to them and burns them for the ignorant are cattle and abomination according to our explanation and the blue the name Adonai namely malchute burns them since they approach her holding a worm which is the evil inclination and also a stranger hence it is written and the stranger that comes near shall be put to death bimidbar 310 138 they should repent before they die when the angel Michael who is a high priest ritually slaughters them who is the lion that devours the offerings descends to Sacrifice them as an offering up before Hashem 139 before expiring it behooves you to make several confessions so that when it comes time for your soul to leave you may concentrate on completing the name, specifically perfecting the union of Malchut called name with the union Yero Yisrael the union of Zeir and and blessed be the name, the union of Malchut, thus bringing your soul as a sacrifice to the name Yahya one should then confess before the Holy One blessed be he so. That he will accept and bring the burning and consuming Hay Malchut near to his name Yudi Hay and cause Ahay to repent before Yahya Bahaya which has a numerical value of 42 that is to return Ahay back to Yudi Hay so as to affect the supernal union within Bina of Yudi Hay Bahaya Hay Yudi Hay Bahaya being Chakma and Hay Bina before the union is completed Malchut is called Adonai Allah Dalat Nunya containing the letters of Din judgment and indication for the Meaning of the law of Aaron, Adalat Yudan Aleph of the kingdom is the law. Thus, the union of Yudi Hey Vav Hey Haya is incomplete. One hundred and forty-one should concentrate upon the name pronounced in full, which is Yud Vav Dalat Hey Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hey Aleph, namely Yudi Hey Vav Hey, fully spelled with Aleph, which is Z E I R N, and so as to declare the unity with the whole heart. Malchut called heart. One should concentrate on it while giving up his rash and with his nefesh be willing to accept death and suffering with his neshama. It behooves him to confess several times and repent. One hundred and forty-one. He explains his words with his nefesh. He takes upon himself death, slaughtering, and burning. If he is punishable by the four forms of capital punishment, which are stoning, burning, slaying, and strangulation, he should take them upon his nefesh from Adonai with his neshama. He should make several confessions and repent before the name Haya, which is Bina, which is attached to the two names Yud Hey Vav Hey. Yud Hey Vav Hey 142 One should concentrate his thoughts upon uttering a confession with his mouth and undertake death with the whole heart that is one should unite Malchut called heart by means of the unity of Hashem is one which is the name pronounced in full as Yud Vav Dalat Hey Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hey Aleph This is why Yud Hey Vav Hey fully spelled with Aleph the secret of Zeir and upon which the priests would kneel bow and prostrate upon their faces and say blessed be the name of it. Glory of his kingdom forever and ever the term glory had kavod caf bet Vav Dalat in numerical value is linked bet left lit heart equals 32 which is Malchut called heart with it did he concentrate upon perfecting the name namely concluding the union of Malchut with Yud Hey Vav Hey 143 Tanaim and Amram how can the ignorant know all these meditations he answers assuredly the ignorant are like an ox a lamb a goat a turtle dove or a pigeon that are sacrificed on the altar the ignorant are. Like the cattle who do not know the Torah, which is the name Yahweh Vav Hey, only Michael the high priest, who brings the name as a burnt offering, sacrificing it before Hashem, concentrates upon the name that is pronounced in full when his rash ascends. So, with all these intentions, it will finally go out of his life with one heart, in just the same manner as a man's rash rises every night. One hundred and forty-four. The sages therefore taught, return a day before you die, for a man should daily return in repentance and deliver his rash to him. So it will leave with one hand. It says, into your hand I commit my spirit. Tehillim three hundred and sixteen, one hundred and forty-five. If he be a Torah scholar, it says of him, a righteous knows the soul of his cattle. Mishlei one thousand two hundred and ten. There is none as wise as the priest who is Chesed, as we said. He who wants to be wiser should turn south, namely cleave to Chesed, the secret of the south. This is because Chesed of Zeir and while in greatness becomes Chakma. If he be a Torah scholar, he should. Have Chesed in him and together with Yud which is Chakma in him he becomes pious. Have Chesed he who has no Chakma in him is not considered pious. It was therefore said that the ignorant man is not pious. Have 25 that is Chesed if he has in him the first Hay the secret of the five books of the Torah that were given from the left. He is called mighty in the Torah and is fearful of sin. If he is ignorant without any Torah in him it says of him nor are the ignorant fearful of sin. 146 he who attains Typharet which is Vav and is a man of wisdom of understanding in the Torah and fearful of sin he inherits his Malchut the last Hay if he observes the king's commands when he attains the name Yud Hay Vav Hay he is worthy of the tetragram the name pronounced in full called Adam Litman which is why Yud Hay Vav Hay fully spelled with Aleph the numerical value of Adam namely Ma is 45 like this Yud Vav Dalat Hay Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hay Aleph an indication of Zeir and went in. Greatness at that time he has control over the body, the partner of the bestial nefesh and the bestial rash. The bestial nefesh makes the vanities of the world. The bestial rash speaks of the vanities of the world, and the bestial neshama harbors all kinds of meditations and thoughts about the vanities of the world. The Torah scholar rules over them, namely over the body and the bestial nefesh rash and neshama. One hundred and forty-seven. This is the meaning of the verse, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. Bereshit one hundred and twenty-six. Here the fish of the sea alludes to the neshama, the birds of the sky to the rash and the cattle to the nefesh. What is over all the earth? It is the body, a small world. They are afraid of the Torah scholars who rule over them, as written, and the fear of you and the dread of you. Bereshit ninety-two. He rules over them on the right side. Chesed and of Chesed it says, and let them have dominion, which. Has the same meaning as may he have dominion also from sea to sea. Tehillim 728, which is an expression of dominion on the left side. Viewer, they fear him as written, and their fear of you and the dread of you. It says of him, a righteous man knows the soul of the nefesh of his cattle, namely he has control over his bestial nefesh. 148, since he is righteous, the Holy One blessed be he does not give him a reward for his good deeds, and he receives no reward in this world nor food for the body. And the bestial nefesh, rash and nefesh, a poor man is regarded as a dead man, but he is above all constantly with the Sheshana 149. For Hashem, your Elohim is a consuming fire, Devarim 424. This fire, the Sheshana needs him to be with her always, as she is never put out, but consumes all the sacrifices which are the prayers and the words of the Torah, for she, the Sheshana, provides for him for Zeir and in what way is she considered his provider through the prayers of Israel, which she Receives hence it is written open for me, Sher Hasherim 52, meaning open with prayer for it is said of her, Adonai open my lips, for she is my sister, Hebar Ayayadi, my love, Hebar Ayayadi, Sher Hasherim 52, my love being my provider by the terms, Ayayadi is in Hashem is my shepherd, Hebar Ayayadi, Tehillim 231, by her the holy children, namely the children of Israel, prepare food for the sacrifices of the kings, Eir and including many vittles which are the bread of the Torah, 150, it is said of her, come eat of my bread, Mishlei 95 on the right, Jesus, and with wine, the wine of the Torah on the left, the side of Gura, and with water libation which is right, and the wine of the written and oral Torah which is left of the central column, Typharet, which includes them both as it comprises right and
Only at certain times namely in the morning and in the evening is written and Aaron shall burn upon it sweet incense early in the morning Shema 307 when, when he trims the candles of it so that there will be oil and incense together it is also written and when Aaron lights the candles at evening he shall burn incense of it 853 during these times in the morning and in the evening and not at any other time incense is burned except when there is plague upon the world when it is burned. Apart from regular times as in the verse and Moses said to Aaron take a censer and put fire in it Bimitbar 1711 Aaron's sons did not burn it when oil and incense were together namely in the morning and evening which alludes to the union of Chakma and Bina oil being Chakma and incense being Bina they therefore died 154 they also forced the time to burn incense during their father's lifetime and it was not allowed for any man to burn incense during his lifetime moreover they were not married and were defective for he who has not taken a wife is defective and is not worthy that blessings would be present in the world by him or their being drawn by him to others we also learned that they were drunk therefore and the fire went out from before Hashem and devoured them Vayikra 102 for the incense is most beloved of all sacrifices the joy of the upper and lower it is also written oil and incense rejoice the heart Mishle 279 RAI Mahim of the faithful shepherd 155 A man is a leper only if he was conceived during the time of menstruation namely that his mother conceived him when she was in her days of impurity there are five kinds of blood in the blood of the menstrual period all of them impure there are five kinds of blood that are pure whoever transgresses by them is considered as if he has transgressed the ten commandments which include all of the 613 precepts 156 a clip called the maid who is the evil inclination is full of defects any man who as defects must not come near the priests therefore must not come near he who has any of the defects in the world since it says of the matron Malchud you are all fair my love there is no blemish in you sure hashering 47 no one who is defective should approach her and a stranger must not come near her or the stranger that comes near shall be put to death Bimid bar 338 this is the secret of the bastard head moms or the letters of moms are lit a strange defect which are the male and female of the clip of the defect being on the female and the strange are the male it is for this reason that he commanded also you shall not approach to a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow Vayikra 1819 of those who did come near her namely Nadab and Abihu it says and offered strange heads are a fire before Hashem which he commanded them not and the fire went out from before Hashem and devoured them and they died Vayikra 101 to 2 section 22 two fires of faithful Shepherd says that the two fires are a supernal fire called the throne of mercy and a lower fire called the throne of judgment. When Tiferet clings to the two fires, Bina and Malchut Chakma rest upon it. We learn of the numerical value of Yudhe Vav faithfully spelled out and are told that all of the 42 letters are in a man, his wife, and children. A man is therefore not complete except when he has a son and daughter. 157 The offering of the letters, namely the union of the letters of the name, is Yud in a man and Hay in a woman. The secret of Abba and I am Avav is in a son. The groom, the secret of Zeir and Pen and Hay in the daughter. The bride, the secret of Malchut Happy is he who unites and draws near the letters of Yudhe Vav Hay in him and his wife, conforming to Yudhe Hay and in his son and daughter, conforming to Vav Hay in holiness with blessings, purity, modesty, humility, and all the good qualities mentioned by the sages of the mission. 158 They warm themselves by the holy fires of. Man and woman the secret of Yudhe a fire going up and going down, as the fire of the female goes from below upwards and the fire of the male goes from above downwards the holy fire of the arranged woods which are the holy trees the holy limbs and the fire going down from above the holy of holies it is due to these two fires that the prophet said wherefore glorify Hashem in the regions of light Yeshayah 2415 they are the fires of the Shechina of which it is written for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire to Barim 424 159 the faithful shepherd explains his word saying these two fires are a supernal fire called the throne of mercy and a lower fire dubbed the throne of judgment they are by the secret of mercy and Malchut the secret of judgment Malchut is a fire going up from below upwards and by is a fire going down from above downward Yudhe Bob is the central column Tiferet attached to them both therefore the upper fire is the secret of Yudhe Bob Yudhe being the secret of Bina and the Bab, the secret of the Tiferet which cleaves to her, the lower fire is the secret of the last A Malchut 160. When Tiferet cleaves to them, both the two fires Bina and Malchut Chakma rest upon it in Chakma. We find the Hebrew pair of letters CAF Chet and MEM Hay MEM Hay equals 45 is Yud Bab Dalit Hay Aleph Bab Aleph Bab Hay Aleph, the numerical value of which IS 45 CAF Chet equals 28 IS, the secret of the fully written Yud Hay Bab Hay with Aleph is fully spelled thus Yud Bab Dalit Bab Aleph Bab Hay Aleph Aleph Lim Pee Bab Aleph Bab Aleph Lim Pee Bab Aleph Bab Hay Aleph Aleph Lim Pee together with the four simple letters of Yud Hay Bab Hay not fully spelled, there are 42 namely the four simple letters of Yud Hay Bab Hay without filling the ten letters of Yud Hay Bab Hay fully spelled and the 28 letters of the fully spelled name themselves spelled out all of the 42 letters are in a man, his wife and children, the secret of the four letters of Yud Hay Bab Hay which together with the secret of full spelling and the fully spelled name are 42 letters man is therefore not complete save when he has a son and a daughter and of RAI Mahim the 161 yud of Yud Hay Bab Hay is gone from he who has not a son who is Bab of Yud Hay Bab Hay gone from he who does not have a daughter is the last Hay of Yud Hay Bab Hay the supernal Hay of Yud Hay Bab Hay the mother of his mate since the letters do not remain the one without the other for this reason the rests upon a man and a woman with and a son and daughter Yud Hay Bab Hay who were properly conceived they are called your children of Hashem your Elohim to Aram 141 section 23 this is the anointing of Aaron Rabbi Yossi says that it is due to Aaron that Malchud was anointed and blessed with holy ointment the priests draw blessings from the oil shakma and then draw it downward to anoint Malchud 162 this Hebzad is the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons Vayikra 735 Rabbi Yossi says Zod which is Malchut is surely an anointment of Aaron for Aaron was anointed from Chakma he brought down the supernal oil of ointment from above Chakma and drew it downward to Malchut it is due to Aaron that Malchut was anointed and blessed with holy ointment it therefore says this Hebzad is the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons most certainly 163 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse and Elisha said to her what shall I do for you tell me what have you in the house to Malachim 42 from this we learned that blessings do not abide upon an empty table or an empty thing and she said your handmaid has nothing in the house except a pot of oil but Elisha said to her surely this was done by a miracle that you have oil which alludes to Chakma for surely it is in its place the place of Chakma whence blessings come out to dwell below it is written they brought the vessels to her and she poured out of it 5 it says only she poured without mentioning who poured since it refers to Chakma 164 Rabbi Yossi said and the oil stopped flowing of it 6 this resembles the words in the corner of Ben Shimon oil Yeshayah 51 corner meaning Malchut and oil meaning Chakma it is also written for your flowing oil you are renowned Sher Hashirim 13 which means the oil Chakma flows on your name Malchut this shows that from this oil Chakma blessings are drawn by the priests and it priests draw it downward to anoint Zot Malchut hence it says this Hebzot is the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons which means that Zot Malchut is anointed by Aaron who drew the oil from Chakma it is also written it is like the precious oil upon the head Tehillim 1332 the oil is drawn upon Aaron's head and flows onto Malchut we already learned this section 24 for with you is the fountain of life Rabbi Shia talks about the fountain of Life that is the supernal oil which is drawn and never ceases that dwells inside the chakma that is superior to everything this fountain dwells with God in sublime love and never separates from him he talks about the tree of life zir that is rooted at the source of life Bina we read about the light that is treasured for the righteous in the world to come another interpretation of the fountain of life has to do with the garden of Eden Rabbi Yitzhak says it has to do with the high priest above and the high priest below and
and for the kindling of the candles of Malchut that tree Zeir Anpin is therefore called the tree of life it is the tree planted and rooted at the source of life by the 166 therefore in your light we see light your light is a light treasured for the righteous for the world to come as written and Elohim saw the light that it was good Bereshit 14 by that light of Israel will shine upon the world to come 167 another interpretation of for with you is the fountain of life Tehillim 3610 this is the holy one blessed be he the supernal tree Zeir Anpin in the middle of the garden of Eden Malchut that comprises all the sides including right and left why is it so because the source of life by is attached to it and adorns it with supernal diadems around the garden since the garden Malchut encompasses and surrounds Zeir Anpin and Zeir Anpin receives Mokin of the first three Sfarot the secret of diadems from Bina which is like a mother crowning her son over all hence it says go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon with the diadem with which his mother crowned him sure hashering 311 of this it says for with you is the fountain of life in your light we see light 168 Rabbi Yitzhak said for with you is the fountain of life refers to the high priest above Chesed of Zeir and correspondingly there is a high priest below in this world the priest Chesed therefore draws the holy supernal anointing oil shakma downward to Malchut and kindles the supernal candles the seven Sfirot Chesed Burei Tifer at Netzach Hadyezet and Malchut the high priest Chesed is filled with the holiness of the seven supernal days Chesed Burei Tifer at Netzach Hadyezet and Malchut and is adorned with all the Sfirot since Chesed includes all the seven Sfirot in IT 169 there are seven days of consecration of the priest below in this world to correspond to that which is above so that everything will resemble that which is above they are called days of consecration which means days of completeness to perfect the priest who is corresponds to Chesed with the other days of the seven Sfirot so that the seven Sfirot are completed together they are therefore called days of consecration literally filling since the other Sfirot are united in him he asks what does this mean he answers the meaning I ask that if the priest is aroused to give abundance the other Sfirot are aroused with him to give abundance since they are united with him 170 it is therefore written and you shall not go out of the door of the tent of meeting until the days of your consecration vay 833 seven days surely in order to complete seven Sfirot the priest below is then adorned entirely in the likeness of above so that when the priest below is roused everything will be roused by him above all the seven Sfirot and blessings will abide above and below 171 Rabbi Abba said why is it different that Moses Tiferet anointed Aaron she said which is higher then Tiferet he answers because he is a son to that place which is the source of life by it is also written that caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses Yeshayah 6312 Moses also attended upon these seven days of consecration so that they would all rest upon Aaron 172 Rabbi Shizkiah sat before Rabbi Lazar he said to him how many lights were created before the world was created he said to him seven they are the light of the Torah the light of Gehenna the light of it. Garden of Eden, the light of the throne of glory, the light of the temple, the light of repentance, and the light of Messiah, the secret of the seven Sfirot of Briah, she said, Burei Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut, they were created before the world was created, seven lights and candles, namely seven Sfirot, were united with Aaron who kindled the candles and drew from the seven candles above to the seven candles below, section 25, all is of the dust, Rabbi Lazar says, that the dust is that found under the holy throne of glory, by the Rabbi Yesus said in his book that the dust is Malchut, the better explanation is that the dust is of the holy temple Malchut, and that this dust is of the supernal dust from Bina, because this world was created from Bina, even the sun was of the dust, Rabbi Shimon says that the congregation of Israel is called a kingdom of priests, because the priests made it a kingdom by drawing Shesedim upon it, and in it Chakma is clothed. With Chesedim, so the kingdom then illuminates and rules when united with Zer and she rules over all the king's treasures, over his armory, over the upper and lower, and over the whole world. 173 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion with the verse All is of the dust and all returns to dust. Kahila 320 We learn that all is of the dust, even the sun will. What is the dust? It is the dust found under the holy throne of glory, which is by 174 in his book. Rabbi Yesus said that all is of the dust, namely the place that gathers everything. Malchut he explains that paths lead to the side and that side, namely right and left, and are gathered to illuminate on every side like dust thrown in every direction. Hence, all are of the dust and all return to dust. According to this dust means Malchut. This raises difficulties concerning the words of Rabbi Lazar, who said that dust means the dust under the holy throne of glory. Malchut of by 175 he answers, but of the dust means of the dust of the temple namely Malchut as Rabbi Yesa Saba said this dust is of the supernal dust from Bina as said and it has dust of gold. Eo 286 which refers to Bina called gold as there is an action below in Malchut likewise there is also one above in Bina we explain that dust means the dust in the temple since this world Malchut was created by He which is Bina and even the will of the sun was of the dust it is written these are the generations of the heaven and of the earth. When they were created had Behabaram which means Behabaram lit he created them with He thus the heaven too which is the will of the sun was created by He for this reason all is of the dust what is the dust it is that which dwells under the holy throne of glory that is Bina 176 it is written you are all fair my love there is no blemish in you sure Hashirim 47 you are all fair my love is the congregation of Israel Malchut and there is no blemish in you refers to the members. Of the Sanhedrin corresponding to the 72 names within Malchut, they are mainly 70 the secret of the 70 members of the Sanhedrin with two witnesses they correspond to the 70 souls that came down with Jacob and with the Holy One blessed be he above them all they are 72 therefore the Sanhedrin and above are not checked for defects 177 we learn the verse and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation Shemot 196 what is a kingdom of priests it is like this. Hebzad is the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons which means that Zot Malchut was anointed by Aaron for when the congregation of Israel Malchut was blessed by the priests she was called after them as written a kingdom of priests 178 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold it is not called Malchut a priest but Mamlechet a priest since the priests who are she said made her high by drawing Shesedim upon it and in it Chakma is clothed with Shesedim in it. Illuminates and rules they made it mistress over all yet it is not called Malchut a priest since in the aspects of her being drawn from heaven Zeir Anpin she is called Malchut namely the kingdom of heaven assuredly here she is called Mamlechet because the priests made her ruler and joined her to the king Zeir Anpin when united with Zeir Anpin she rules over all the king's treasures over the king's armory over the upper and lower and over the whole world section. 26 and has founded his bundle on the earth this section talks about how the union of Zeir Anpin with Malchut the completion of the three columns the service of the priest in giving sacrifice and the blessing of the upper and the lower Sfirot all have a bearing on the establishment of God's community on earth 179 Rabbi Yussi said it is written and has founded his bundle have you good on the earth Amos 96 it is his bundle when the king Zeir Anpin mates towards Malchut called earth with all those holy diadems gathered as one then it says his bundle 180 Rabbi Yitzhak said his bundle have you good it all resembles the words and take a bunch have a good out of his of Shemot 1222 he asks what does this mean he answers when Zeir Anpin and Malchut are joined together and Malchut is blessed by the three columns of Zeir Anpin she rules over everything namely the three columns of Zeir Anpin are clothed by her and she rules over them she then illuminates above and below all this is when the priest is at his service offering a sacrifice burning incense concentrating upon drawing everything near into one union then it is written and has founded his bundle on the earth 181 Rabbi Yossi said when Aaron the secret of the right column she said of Zeir Anpin journeys to give abundance to Malchut they all journey with him namely all the three columns until the congregation of Israel is blessed by the three columns the upper beings the Sfirot of Zeir Anpin are blessed as are the Lower beings the Sfirot of Malchut then it is written blessed be Hashem out of Zion he who dwells in Jerusalem hallelujah Tehillim 13521 as Zeir Anpin called Yud Hevav Hei is blessed out of Zion Yezid of Malchut
Discussion saying, and I have put my words in your mouth, and I have covered you in the shadow of my hand. Yeshua 5116. We learned that the Holy One, blessed be he, covers every man who is occupied with the Torah, whose lips speak the words of the Torah, and the Shechinah spreads her wings over him. Hence it says, and I have put my words in your mouth, and I have covered you in the shadow of my hand. Moreover, he sustains the world, and the Holy One, blessed be he, rejoices with him as on the day he planted heaven and earth. Hence the verse concludes with that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, You are my people. Ibid 183. From here we learned that Israel are called by the name Zion as written, and say to Zion, You are my people. We saw that the congregation of Israel is called by the name Zion as written, Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and those that return to her with righteousness. Yeshua 127, 184. He further quoted by up. The testimony sealed the Torah among my disciples. Yeshua 816 bind up the testimony. This is David's testimony, namely Malchut as written, and my testimony that I shall teach them. Tehillim 13212 bind refers to a bond as in fastening to make a bond in one place and bind up the testimony means Malchut is bound. Seal the Torah among my disciples means sealing the Torah's EIR and with all the abundance and greatness drawn from above. Where is his seal? Namely its end. It is among my disciples. Netzach and Hot called taught of Hashem. Yeshua 5413 since greatness and oil are gathered between the two pillars. Netzach and Hot to dwell there. They are the place of all greatness and oil that flows from above. From Tiferet called the Torah and they pour it into the mouth of Yezid to empty it into the testimony Malchut. Then everything is fastened into a faithful bond. The lesson of the verses bind up the testimony. The bond of Malchut is caused by this to seal the Torah in my disciples. So that the abundance of the Torah is sealed, namely concluded in Netzach and Hot, and from them Yezid is Malchut bound to Yezid to receive abundance, and all is tied into one bond. Section 28 The difference between Torah and Prophets We are told that those who study the Torah are in a much higher grade than the Prophets. Those who say things from the Holy Spirit are the lowest, since the Holy Spirit is drawn from Malchut, that is the lowest. Those who study Torah stand above in the place called Torah Zir and Ben that sustains Malchut. The rabbis meet a man with three branches of myrtle tied together to represent the fragrance of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 185 Come and behold what is the difference between those who are occupied with the Torah and the faithful Prophets. It is that those who are occupied with the Torah are always more valuable than the Prophets, why they are in a much higher grade than the Prophets, since they who are occupied in the Torah stand. Above in the place called the Torah Zeir Anpin, which sustains all the faith Malchut, which has nothing but what Zeir Anpin gives her, the prophets stand below, namely under the chest of Zeir Anpin in the place called Netzach and Hot. Those who are occupied with the Torah are of more importance than the prophets and are superior to them, for the one stand above and the other stand below. Those who say things through the Holy Spirit are the lowest, since the Holy Spirit is drawn from Malchut, which is the lowest. 186 Happy are those who labor in the Torah, who are of the highest grade of all he who labors in the Torah and needs neither sacrifices nor burnt offerings, because the Torah is better than everything. It is the bond of everyone's faith, namely the bond of Malchut. It is therefore written, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Mishlei 317 and great peace have they who love the Torah. There is no stumbling to them. Tehillim 119,165 section. 29 The fragrance we learn that man attains an additional neshama on Shabbat and that it leaves when Shabbat leaves the fragrance of the myrtle brings the man's nefesh and ruash together and they rejoice these also draw near the supernal ruash and nefesh their and and the smell of the myrtle and the smell of the sacrifice draw everything together we read of the two candles one above and one below the smoke from the candle below and from the offering rises up and lights the supernal candles lastly we are told that it is necessary to praise God for the wonderful things he has done 187 while they were walking they met a man with three branches of myrtle on his hand they approached him and said to him why do you have them he said to give relief to the lost one namely the additional neshama which is lost to a man's nefesh by the end of Shabbat Rabbi Lazar said this is well yet why three one would have been enough he said to him one for Abraham one for Isaac and one for Jacob the three columns, Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, I bound them together and smelled them because of the verse. Your oils are fragrant for your flowing oil, you are renowned. Sure, Hasherim 13, it is for this fragrance that the weakness of the Nefesh is sustained and faith Malchut is sustained and blessings are drawn from above and from below. Rabbi Lazar said, Happy is the portion of Israel in this world and in the next 188. Come and behold, the world is sustained by this fragrance alone. From the fragrance smelled below, another fragrance is made known above the secret of the illumination of Chakma. When Shabbat leaves, the additional Nefesh man attains on Shabbat is gone and man's Nefesh and Ruash remain isolated and sad. This fragrance comes, which is drawn by the odor of the myrtle and the Nefesh and Ruash are brought close to one another through IT and they rejoice. 189 man's Ruash therefore needs the other upper Ruash, which is Zeir and in order to receive the fragrance. The secret of the illumination of Chakma when the smell is accepted, the upper rash and nefesh male and female and also man's rash and nefesh come near each other and rejoice. It is the same with the smell of the sacrifice through the smell everything draws together, namely all the Sfirat of Zeir and Pen and all the candles are set ablaze the Sfirat of Malchut and rejoice. 190 come and behold there are two candles one above and one below when man lights the candle below and extinguishes it. Candle above the smoke from the lower candle rises and kindles the upper candle so it is with the smoke from the offering the smoke rises from the offering and causes the flowing of the illumination of Chakma above and lights the supernal candle Zeir and Pen and Malchut they are lit together and all the Sfirat draw near through the smell since it is a sweet savor to Hashem this has already been explained 191 the smell of the sacrifice therefore sustains everything and sustains it. World and the sacrifices by the priest who sacrifices everything for this reason the seven days of consecration are completed by him which correlate to the seven Sfirat, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazit, and Malchut, so that everyone will be blessed by his service and joy and blessings will abide above and below. Section 30 Faith is at night we learn that Malchut is called faith and also night and that faith is at night in the morning God will purify Israel of their sins and they will be cleansed. 192 It is written Hashem you are my Elohim I will exalt you I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things, counsels of old in faithfulness and truth. Yeshua 251 This verse has been explained Hashem you are my Elohim means that man should give thanks to the holy name and praise him for everything once is his praise this has been explained it comes from the deepest of all Keter has written for you have done wonderful things. Wonderful things has the same meaning as in the verse, and his name is called Yeshua 95, which is Keter. We have already learned the words councils of old councils is as in wonderful counselor, namely by the call council and of old lit from afar resembles the words Hashem appeared of old to me. Yermaya 312, she brings her food from afar. Mishlei 3114 alludes to Chakma from which councils, namely by receives 193 in faithfulness and truth is like El of truth, also faith. And without iniquity, Devarim 324, it was explained that faith is at night, Malchut called night, and also called faith is written, and your faithfulness every night. Tehillim 922, and they are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. Each of 323, the Holy One, blessed be, he will purify Israel from their sins as written, and will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Yeshua 3625, may Hashem be blessed. Forever, Amen and Amen.